I'd like to call this council and committee meeting to order. Madam Clerk, the roll call. Your Worship, all members of council are present this evening. Thank you. <clears throat> we have a few announcements this evening. We haven't met for a little while, and uh, a number of things have taken place since we were last together. The uh, Fort Erie Racetrack opened for the 121st season on May the 29th. They had a very successful day, large crowd, very generous wagering, and uh, also had large uh, fields for racehorses, which is very important uh, for the local horse racing industry. And uh, after the uh, racing was over, the Caverners played, and uh, quite an extraordinary uh, group. It's a Beatles uh, tribute band. On uh, June the 1st, there was a Canadian citizenship ceremony at the Peace Bridge Public School. Uh, 30 new Canadians were sworn in. Uh, they're from all over the world, uh, now choosing Canada to be their home. The ceremony was provided over by Mike Scott, who has the Order of Canada. He's one of the former owners of the uh, uh, Peace Bridge Brokerage uh, Logistics. On June the 4th, the Chamber of Commerce awarded bursaries at the Bell Tower in Fort Erie, and uh, this was made possible by uh, sponsorships from a variety of businesses locally and some outside of Fort Erie. But I wanted to mention the names of the students who received the bursaries because they're all uh, very good students and I'm sure that they will all do very well uh, going forward. They were uh, Gabriel Demizio, Noah Desmaris, Arcelia Elizabeth Wazo, Laura Kim, Caitlin McInnes, Samantha Maley, Peyton Midgley, Kendall Percheluk, Jacob Schultz, and Holly Smith. And of course, uh, Last Thursday, there was a provincial election, and uh, we have a new government, and uh, I, can, I can say that I uh, have sent a letter to the Premier-elect on behalf of myself and the Council to indicate that we're quite anxious to work with the new government. Uh, we're very much looking forward to the reintroduction of slots at the racetrack, and I also raised a couple of the major projects in Fort Erie, so I'm looking forward to the opportunity to work with Premier Ford. Uh, on Friday, we had a new art gallery open in uh, downtown Ridgeway, the Raven Art Gallery, uh, opened by two individuals from out of town. Um, quite an interesting background, but the, um, they've taken one of the uh, buildings in downtown Ridgeway, turned it into a magnificent uh, display area for art, uh, and they've got uh, paintings and sculptures from all over the world, uh, which is quite impressive in itself. But they had a very good turnout. They also had an open house on Saturday so that's at 309 Ridge Road, right downtown. Yesterday was the Corporate Challenge at Bridgewater, another excellent event. This is the second year that it's been run in its, uh, in its recent incarnation. Uh, 17 teams, all of whom participated in a number of fundraising activities prior to the event, such as raising funds for cystic fibrosis, uh, raising um, blood donations for Canadian Blood Services, uh, raising uh, donations for COPE and the SPCA. Um, I want to thank and congratulate Ro Ray Rosatani and Holly Johnson, all of their team, because they had a lot of volunteers, the sponsors that helped them, Bridgewater for supplying the venue, uh, Giant FM for being there, and of course all of the participants um, uh, who put in a long day, some of them put in a long evening at the uh, pre-challenge party and some of them put in some early, uh, early days with some of their other activities. So congratulations to them. Yesterday also at the Stevensville Conservation Club, Rods and Relics held its annual car show uh, to raise money for Tender Wishes. And again, it was a beautiful uh, location. They had, a, again, another uh, standout a number of vehicles. Um, I want to thank Frank Razzo and his team, along with their many sponsors, for putting that together, and the Stevensville Conservation Club for providing the venue. Uh, all of the participants, of course, who helped to raise the, um, the donations. And congratulations to the uh, winner of the Mayor's Choice, which was a 1932 Graham. Fantastic vehicle. Sorry I couldn't pick George Perizaders, but uh, he has a nice old car, too. I um, wanted to make reference to... Um, Amendments that were made recently to the uh, dog bylaw. Beg pardon. We did that. Uh, did the Navy leave? In, yeah, yesterday was the Navy League inspection. 
week ago was the uh, Air Cadets inspection and uh, just over a week ago, I guess, was the uh, Army Cadets inspection. So they've, those groups all uh, provide wonderful programming for our young people. Um, it's remarkable to look at the, the, the youth when they go into the program and then to see them several years later, how accomplished and confident they are. So kudos to all of the individuals who participate in those programs and provide the training for our young people. Did want to mention the um, changes to the dog bylaw. And uh, on May the 28th, Council passed a bylaw which prohibits the keeping of animals in an enclosed space, including motor vehicles, without adequate ventilation. This, is, this of course, is directed to uh, animals being kept in locked vehicles without proper ventilation, either too cold, too hot, uh, very dangerous for the dogs. We also uh, included in that amendment to the bylaw changes which will affect the carrying of uh, dogs uh, from one place to another because that had not been initially raised during the notice of motion that gave rise to the bylaw changes. We passed the bylaw, but those provisions will not take effect until June the uh, 19th, which is the day after our next council meeting. The changes prohibit um, animals being outside of the passenger cab of a motor vehicle when on the road, whether the vehicle is moving or not. Um, they also uh, prohibit animals from being in the back of a flatbed truck unless they are in a fully enclosed trailer, uh, in a fully enclosed bed area of a truck with enough room to allow the animal to stand and turn around, or contained in a crate allowing the animal to stand and turn around. No animals are to be transferred in the bed of a pickup truck unless securely tethered, and an animal cannot be kept in a motor vehicle or trailer where doing so may cause pain, suffering, harm, or negligence. There is an opportunity for the public to um, provide comment to council. They can either register for our meeting next Monday. To do so, you would contact the clerk's office, 871-1600, um, extension 2236, no later than this Thursday, June the 14th at 3 p.m., or you can provide input in writing addressing it to care of Carol Schofield, who is the clerk of the town. That can be mailed to the town hall at One Municipal Center Drive, Fort Erie, or can be dropped off here. Council will deliberate um, any uh, information or, or uh, comments made by the public prior to the passage of that bylaw. And if we don't receive anything by next Monday, the bylaw will become fully in force the following day. Um, I wanted to make some comment about communities in bloom. Um, this year's local co uh, competition has been canceled uh, after uh, a lot of deliberation by the Communities in Bloom Committee. Um, this is one of the busiest town committees in uh, the town, requires a significant commitment of time from its members, and the current membership is very low uh, for a variety of reasons and it was determined uh, that it was not possible this year to conduct the local um, competition, Communities in Bloom competition. Notices were sent, have been sent out to each of the individuals uh, in the town who participated as an entrant in the competition last year to advise them of, of the hiatus this year. And uh, staff in the committee are reviewing the mandate of the committee, uh, what additional resources may be required from the town uh, in order to continue this initiative and how best to get the program into a position to uh, re-enter the international competition next year. I want to thank all of the members of the committee. They've put in tremendous uh, a number of hours, a lot of energy, and uh, there's just so much that um, a small number of people can do. And so this seems to be a reasonable approach for them to be taking and for the town to step back and determine uh, how much we need to commit to this type of uh, initiative. And I'm confident that 2019 will be another successful uh, and eventful year for Communities in Bloom. This Friday, we have two um, major community events. The first is the uh, Town of Fort Erie Volunteer Recognition and Appreciation event. It starts at 5.30 uh, with a reception between 5.30 and 7 at uh, G-Fest across the street. That will be hosted by the Pomegranate Restaurant. There will be desserts and um, hors d'oeuvres. Then the um, actual ceremony starts at 7 o'clock. 
Uh, it will be emceed by our two councillors, Councillor Kim Zanko, Councillor Stephen Pasiro, and there will be a, a keynote speaker, Sarah McVannell, who will be talking about living and leveraging your greatness. So that's an opportunity for the town of Fort Erie to show our appreciation for all of the individuals who are members uh, and participate in the town appointed committees, and that's Friday, this Friday. Same night, at the Leisure Plex the, uh, is the annual Kinsman Club of Fort Erie Wa Sports Wall of Fame dinner. Uh, again, reception in advance of the dinner, which is scheduled for seven. This year's honorees are Bill Hockey, Clyde Brooks, Cheryl Suzik Hebern, Matt DeRozier, and the 1978-79 Fort Erie Junior B meteor Meteors. Wow, I played 10 years prior to that, so not quite as good a team either. Um, for tickets or more information, you can call 905-871-5838. And I should mention that the town uh, staff held its, uh, or the town held its staff appreciation barbecue last Wednesday. Uh, it's an annual event where we show appreciation to those individuals who work for the municipality and help to make uh, this um, wonderful town day in and day out. And then finally, on a, on a less happy note, it was brought to my attention uh, last week that there were some signs posted on some utility poles in the Bertie Thompson area which were of a um, racist and inflammatory uh, nature. It was then brought to my attention a couple of days later that in, uh, in the north end of Fort Erie, uh, Bowen Road, uh, Brock Street in that vicinity, there was someone actually distributing a very, very a racist and inflammatory um, material. Um, I advised the individuals that brought this to my attention to contact the police. I contacted uh, the local police department. Um, Kim, Kim McAllister, who is the staff sergeant, was very helpful. She um, takes this as serious as the town of Fort Erie because we pride ourselves on diversity and inclusion and making sure that this is a, a welcoming uh, community. This type of material has no place in Fort Erie, really has no place anywhere, uh, particularly Fort Erie. But I'm advised by the staff sergeant that she uh, brought this to the attention of their um, investigations unit, their forensic unit. So they're, they're uh, pursuing the matter. Uh, if there's any further material or if any, anyone in the community receives any material um, or is aware of any uh, racist, um, hateful material, please bring it to my attention or the attention of Staff Sergeant McAllister for further, um, further action. Those are the announcements. Um, so that takes us then to declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any? I have one, Madam Clerk, with respect to the first public meeting and report PDS 32 dash 2018, which relate to Scott Hunter, who um, has been a client of my firm. So I will ask when we get to that point for the public meetings, I will ask Councillor Nutt, who is the acting mayor, to take over the chair. Uh, if there are no other disclosures of pecuniary interest, there are no notices of upcoming public meetings. So that takes us to public meetings. Councillor Nutt, can I ask you to take over the chair, please? Certainly, Your Worship. We'll start with the first public meeting, which is a property rezoning, and Matt Kernahan has a presentation. Please turn on his mic. Thank you. Why not? You may proceed when ready. <clears throat> Thanks, Councillor Nutt. This public meeting relates to an application for a zoning bylaw amendment that was submitted by Scott Hunter, who's the owner of 1201 Ridge Road North. The purpose of this application is to permit the creation of a building lot and the construction of a new single detached house to the south of the existing house at 1201 Ridge Road North. The rezoning is required to permit the proposed lot frontage of 25 meters and a minimum dwelling area of approximately 1,000 square feet. The rezoning will also realign the boundary between the rural residential zone and the agricultural zone at the rear, at the rear of the property. Notification of this meeting was provided in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act by placing an advertisement in the May 17th, 2018 edition of the Fort Erie Post. Property owners within 120 meters of the subject site were also mailed a notice of the public meeting on May the 10th. 
This is an aerial photograph of the subject property as well as the surrounding area. The subject property is located in the rural residential area north of the Ridgeway Thunder Bay neighborhood and is on the east side of Ridge Road North. This is an aerial image highlighting the subject lands and the surrounding land uses. To the north and south are single detached dwellings. To the east is Ridge Road North and single detached dwellings. Agricultural uses, including field crop production, are located to the west. 1201 Ridge Road North is designated rural residential on Schedule A of the town's official plan. The rural residential policies of the official plan states that lands with this designation are intended for single detached dwellings, group homes, home occupations, and accessory dwellings, primarily on larger lots, which can be sustained on private services. Although municipal water services may be available in some locations. The proposal to amend the zoning to facilitate the severance of one lot and the development of a single detached dwelling is consistent with the rural residential land use policies of the town's official plan. This slide displays the natural heritage features as identified in the official plan. There are no natural heritage features on the subject property. The applicant completed a natural heritage assessment that was reviewed by the region and the town's environmental advisory committee that confirms that an EIS or further study is not required in this case. As I mentioned, the majority of the subject property is currently zoned rural residential with a small portion at the rear zoned agricultural. The rural residential zone permits single attached dwellings on lots with a minimum size of one acre and 60 meters of frontage. The rural residential zoning also includes provisions for minimum dwelling sizes. The application proposes to change the zoning from rural, rural residential to a site specific rural residential zone, as well as the rear of the pr property from agricultural to that same site specific rural residential zone. The site specific Elements of the rezoning is required to permit the proposed lot frontage and of 25 meters for the severed lot, 50 for the retained, and a minimum dwelling area of 92 square meters. The rezoning will also realign the boundary of the rural residential zone with the rear property lines. This slide shows the development proposal. The proposed lot with approximately 25 meters of frontage is shown as part two. The retained lot with the existing dwelling is shown as part one. This is a slide looking at the proposed lot in the northwesterly direction from Ridge Road North. This is a slide looking southwest from Ridge Road North at the existing dwelling. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Kernahan. Does anyone have any questions? On council regarding Mr. Kernahan's presentation. Go ahead, Councillor Pissero. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Kernahan, uh, because this is being done uh, concurrently, I guess, could you just explain to um, my colleagues? I know I'm up to speed as chair of planning, but could you just uh, explain what's happening tonight as far as this particular final amendment? Uh, through you, Chair, to Councillor Pissero. This application is being processed as a minor amendment um, due to its nature and the anticipated and now uh, we know low level of public interest in the application. The public meeting and a recommendation report are being brought forward on the, uh, on the same night. So the applicant was able to pay a reduced fee uh, in order to have it processed in this fashion. Um, there were no members of the public at the neighborhood information meeting that we held. Uh, back in May, so um, that's why we're processing it in this fashion. Thank you, Mr. Kennan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just thought that was important to skip ahead to what we'll be deciding later, because sometimes when we ask questions during a public meeting, we go under the assumption that there'll be a staff recommendation coming back, but uh, tonight we'll be dealing with it uh, in its final form when we get to the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other councillors have any other questions regarding the presentation? Seeing none, thank you very much, Mr. Kernahan. If you wouldn't mind, I'll ask for anyone to come forward that wants to speak in favor of this zoning. The proponent. Well, Mr. Hunter, I'm here to answer any Can questions. you come down to the sure. uh, podium, please, Mr. Hunter, and just I'm the owner give your of name the, and address? Sorry, yeah, Scott Hunter, 1201 Ridge Road. If counselors have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. 
No. Do you have any questions? No. Obviously, you're in favor of it. So. I'm in favor of it. Thank you. You're welcome. Just for those watching at home. Does anyone wish to speak against this zoning amendment? Okay, seeing none, I'll close this public meeting and hand the chair back to his worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Nutt. That then takes us to the second public meeting, which is a property rezoning, William Cutler, 396 Ridgeway Road. And we'll follow the same format, uh, Mr. Kernahan. Thank you, Your Worship. This public meeting is related to an application for a zoning bylaw amendment that was submitted by William Cutler, who's the owner of the subject property located at 396 Ridgeway Road. The purpose of this application is to facilitate a boundary adjustment that will enable the construction of a new single detached dwelling on a lot to the north of the dwelling with the address 396 Ridgeway Road, and to make a boundary adjustment uh, between the zoning lines at the rear of the lots. This application proposes to change the zoning from core mixed use two zone to a site specific core mixed use two zone. The only site specific provision that's requested is that the residential development be subject to the regulations of the R2B zone rather than the R2 zone. The application also requests that the boundary line between the CMU two zone and the R2B zone, which runs through the backyard of the lots in a north south direction, be moved easterly to align with the rear of the lots. Notification of this public meeting was provided in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act by placing an ad in the May 17th edition of the 40 Re Post. Property owners within 120 meters of the subject area were mailed a notice of complete application and public meeting on the same date. The scenario photograph of the subject property as well as the surrounding area. The subject property is located in the Crystal Beach neighborhood on the east side of Ridgeway Road. This aerial image highlights the subject lands and summarizes or displays the surrounding land uses. To the north and east are single detached dwellings. To the south is Graber Avenue and a restaurant which is now closed as well as single detached dwellings. To the west is Ridgeway Road and more single detached dwellings. The subject property is designated core mixed use on Schedule A of the town's official plan. The official plan permits the development of a mix of commercial, institutional, and residential uses subject to the implementing bylaw provisions. The official plan policies permit the development of standalone residential units subject to appropriate separation from selected commercial establishments, including restaurants. Although no specific separation distance from restaurants is identified in the official plan, the proposed dwelling would be located in excess of 100 feet from the restaurant to the south and is further away than the existing dwelling on the property and many others. The separation is therefore considered to be appropriate. The proposal to amend the zoning to facilitate the construction of a single detached dwelling is consistent with the land use policies of the official plan. This slide demonstrates natural heritage features in the vicinity of the property. As can be seen, there are none on the property or in the immediate vicinity. This slide, this slide demonstrates the zoning on and in the vicinity of the subject property. The subject area is currently zoned core mixed use two zone and R2B zone. The CMU two zone permits single detached dwellings subject to the regulations of the R2 zone. R2 zoning regulations permit singles, single detached dwellings on relatively large lots with generous setbacks. The residential lands to the north and east of the subject property uh, have the residential 2B zoning. The R2B zone permits development of single attached dwellings on smaller lots that are characteristic of the sub historical subdivision lot fabric in this area. 396 Ridgeway Road, the subject property is comprised of two whole lots within one of these historic plans of subdivision. The existing dwelling is located on the southern lot, which has 35 meters of frontage. However, the dwelling is located nearly on top of the lot line between the two lots. The existing lot to the, north of the to the north of the dwelling has 12 meters of frontage. The owner wishes to move the lot line between these two lots northwards 
in order to provide an adequate side yard setback from the existing dwelling while maintaining adequate space to construct a single detached dwelling north of the existing home. The boundary adjustment would result in a new southerly lot containing the existing dwelling with 12.4 meters of frontage in an area of 427 square meters. The modified northerly lot would have 10.4 meters of frontage with an area of approximately 360 square meters. The modified lot frontages, sizes, and the existing dwelling setbacks all meet the requirements of the R2B zone and are, and are in keeping with the residential character of the surrounding area. This application proposes to change the zoning from core mixed use 2 zone and R2B zone to a site-specific CMU2 zone. As I mentioned, the only site-specific provision is that the residential development be subject to the regulations of the R2B zone rather than the R2 zone. The application also requests that a boundary, that the boundary line between the CMU2 zone and R2B zone be shifted easterly to, to align with the rear property lines. This slide shows the development proposal. The proposed lot with approximately 10.5 meters of frontage is shown as parcel one to the north. The retained lot with the existing dwelling is shown as parcel two. As I mentioned, both lots meet the R2B zoning regulations. This slide is looking northeast from Ridgeway Road. This is looking east from Ridgeway Road, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kernahan. Do any members of the council have any questions? The, um, so for the R2B zoning, what is the minimum frontage? 10 meters. Okay, so this is just slightly above 10 meters. That's correct. Uh, if there are no other questions, thank you, Mr. Kernel. I'll ask if the proponent wishes to address council. My name's uh, William Cutler, and uh, I'm the owner of 396 Bridgeway uh, Road. And I'm looking, uh, I'm in favor of it, of course. Uh, right. and, Is there uh, anything you wish to add other than what Mr. Kernan has already stated? Uh, no, I don't think so. Any members of council have any questions of Mr. Cutler? Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here who, other than Mr. Cutler, who wishes to speak in favor of the application? There being none, is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the application? If there are none, then I'll call this meeting closed, and we'll proceed with the final public meeting scheduled for this evening, which is the official plan amendment property rezoning by Urban Environmental Management, Inc., at uh, 260 to 262 Gorham Road and 3854 Disher Street. Mr. Kernahan, back to you. Thank you again, Your Worship. This application is related to a combined official plan and zoning bylaw amendment that was submitted by Greg Terrace of Urban and Environmental Management, who represents Lucky Gas Incorporated, who are the owner of the subject properties. The purpose of this application is to permit the addition of a car wash and drive through restaurant to the existing gasoline bar and the expansion of the commercial uses onto the residential property immediately to the east of the existing ones. The proposed official plan amendment will change the designation of the property with the address 3854 Disher Street from residential to commercial. The zoning amendment will change the zoning of the entire subject property to a site-specific C4 zone permitting a drive-through restaurant in addition to the uses permitted in the C4 zone with, site, with a number of site-specific regulations. Notification of this public meeting was provided in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act by placing an ad in the May 17th edition of the Fort Erie Post. In addition, property owners within 120 meters were mailed a public notice of the meeting on May 10th. This is an aerial photograph of the subject property as well as the surrounding area. The property is located in the neighborhood of Ridgeway Thunder Bay on the east side of Gorham Road, just south of the Friendship Trail. This aerial image highlights the subject property as well as the surrounding land uses. To the north is the Friendship Trail. To the south is Disher Street and single detached dwellings. To the east are single detached dwellings. To the west is Gorham Road our Lady of Grace Spiritual Center, as well as vacant commercial lands, including a former auto, formal 
former auto repair shop that is subject to a zoning bylaw amendment to permit the redevelopment of it for an automobile service station and drive through restaurant. The area subject to these planning amendments is within the urban area boundary and 260 to 262 Gorham Road is designated commercial in the Ridgeway Thunder Bay secondary plan. 260 to 260 Gorham Road is also within an area identified as the Gorham Commercial Gateway in the secondary plan, which is a traditional highway commercial area intended for automobile friendly development that serves the local neighborhood as well as the commuting public. Proposal to amend the zoning to facilitate the development of an automobile service station with an associated re retail store and eating establishment with a drive through is consistent with the land use designation and policies of the Ridgeway Thunder Bay Secondary Plan. 2854 Disher is designated urban residential in the town's official plan. Subject application proposes to change the designation of the property to general commercial to permit the expansion of commercial uses, including a car wash onto a portion of this property. This slide displays natural heritage features in the area. An environmental corridor is identified in the vicinity of the subject property related to the Fort Erie Friendship Trail. Proposed development will not impact on this feature. This slide demonstrates the current zoning on the subject property. 260 to 262 Gorham Road is currently zoned automobile service station commercial C4 zone. The C4 zoning permits the automobile service station the existing associated retail store and car wash, but does not permit a restaurant. Redevelopment of the site to include the restaurant therefore requires a zoning amendment to permit this use. The addition of gas pumps and the car wash as they are proposed also necessitates the zoning bylaw amendment due to the requirement for certain site specific regulations. The redevelopment of 3854 Disher Avenue for commercial purposes requires an amendment to the zoning bylaw to change the zoning from residential to zone to the proposed site-specific C4 zone. This slide shows the site plan for this combined official plan and zoning bylaw amendment application. The site plan shows the existing automobile service station and associated retail store, as well as the proposed new pump island in the north part of the site. A car wash is proposed in the northeast part of the site, partially within the rear yard of 3854 Disher Street. A drive through restaurant is proposed near the corner of Gorham and Disher Street. The drive through wraps around the restaurant and is capable of stacking 13 vehicles. The parking area is located to the east of the restaurant in the area of an existing dwelling, which is proposed to be removed. The parking is provided along the north side of the property in the side yard and in the rear yard. The existing dwelling at 3854 Disher Street is proposed to remain as a non-conforming use. This is a shot of the subject property as it is today, looking east from Gorham Road. This is a shot of the subject property looking southeast from the Friendship Trail. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kernahan. Councillor Butler, I see your hand up. Thank you, Your Worship. I have several questions for you, Mr. Kernahan. Um, first of all, if you could go to slide three, where it shows the homes on the street. So where, sorry, yes. Um, so 3854 currently is residential and he is, the owner of the property is renting that out. I know it's vacant at, at this point, but um, it has traditionally been a rental unit, correct? Uh, through Mr. Mayor to the Councillor, I, I, I'm not, I don't have any first-hand knowledge of that, but I, I see the applicant here nodding at me that he's traditionally rented that, yes. Uh, one of the things that, um, we had discussed at the open house with the owner is that um, the residents there would prefer to keep that as a residential as opposed to a C4 zoning. Um, one of the reasons why is because uh, it acts as a buffer to the remaining houses um, and actually uh, helps with the barrier of the noise. Now the owner said that he would be agreeable to that. I don't know if that has ever been brought up since that open uh, house meeting, but hearing your presentation tonight leads me to believe that that has not, in fact, uh, been told to you. Uh, through, through Mr. Mayor, that's that's correct. That's the first I've uh, I've heard of that change in the proposal. Uh, 
that would become a commercial. I, I'm sorry, I missed the. the Heritage Sorry. trees. Yes, the heritage trees that are on that property, what will happen to those? Uh, I wasn't, through Mr. Mayor, I wasn't aware that there were heritage trees on the property. Uh, is in designated trees? Or are, are, are we just talking about established, older um, residential trees? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, established, older residential trees. I don't know if they've been designated officially. Right. But I recognize one at least. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Butler, there is a landscape plan included in Appendix 3 to this report, which identifies how the, how the site will be landscaped. Um, my quick review of it at this moment uh, tells me that uh, there will be new landscaping installed and what's there will be replaced with, uh, with what's indicated on the landscape plan. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. I um, am going to wait to ask more questions after I've heard from other delegates. Sure. Thank you. Is there anyone else that has any questions? Mr. Kernahan, I've, I've got a couple more. Um, I'm sorry, George. I, I'm sorry, Councilor McDermott. I didn't see your hand up. Please proceed. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> Mr. Kernahan, uh, has there been a noise study done on this one? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor McDermott, yes, there has been a noise study. Uh, it's briefly summarized in the report. Um, makes some recommendations regarding uh, operating hours um, and a noise barrier. If I may continue your worship. Yes. You may. Okay, so how are we gauging the noise levels? How, how do we gauge that? I mean, there's, 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 so if he wants to put a car wash in, how, how are you gauging what the noise levels are? Uh, through you, Mayor, to the Councillor, um, the noise consultant um, characterized the noise according to the type of equipment that was going to be used in that car wash. Um, and they specced the decibel levels that, that they thought would be or that they believe would be uh, experienced at certain distances from that car wash and um, proposed ways to mitigate that based on, based on those levels. Okay, that's it for now, Your Worship. Any other councillors? Councillor Passero. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Kernahan, uh, through Your Worship to Mr. Kernahan, you touched on answering Councillor McDermott's question to the noise levels as to what that would mitigate it to. And in the report, it does say that it would mitigate it to acceptable levels. W what are we defining as acceptable levels? Who's setting that threshold? Uh, three, I'm going to defer to Ms. Dolch on this one. I appear she has a better answer than I do. Ms. Dolch. Through you to the councillor, um, the acceptable levels are based on ministry standards. So the Ministry of Environment sent, sets acceptable noise parameter standards. Um, there are certain decibel levels that you have to meet. So if you don't meet those, similar in this case, you'd have to do mitigation measures, including in this case a, a noise wall. Councillor Zero, back to you. Through your, your worship to Ms. Dolch. Are those levels then enforced um, regardless of what the commercial operation is? That is just a standard that they put in place regardless of what could be going on the site? Or is there something specific to the fact that it's a car wash immediately adjacent to a residential property? Ms. Dolge? Through you to the councillor. Uh, the noise is assessed based on use. Uh, the noise is assessed based on use, but the ministry has a set decibel level for acceptable noise versus not acceptable noise. Um, so that's not based on use, that's just an average um, uh, 
I think it's 50 dBA, depending on the daytime versus nighttime noise. And as you can see from this noise study, there are some, some nighttime concerns, and that's why they're restricting the hours of operation. So based on those, the noise consultant looks at those, those levels and uh, suggests appropriate mitigation measures to make sure those come within acceptable levels. Okay. Thank you, Your Worship. Anything further? No. Councillor Butler, back to you. I just have a quick question, and, and um, I don't, I'm not sure if you know the answer to this, but I, I'm just curious what came first. Um, was it the gas station or the residences that are on Disher Street? Mr. Kernahan, would you know that? Three, Mr. Mayor, I, I don't have an answer to that question. I could certainly look it up and um, get back to you. Okay, thank you. I'd appreciate that. Mr. Kernahan, before you... Before I get a chance to ask you a question, I'll go to Councillor Lubert. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Redekop. Uh Mr. Kernan, can you go to the, uh, the slide that shows the actual car wash, the automatic, the new automatic wash bay? Yeah, that's it there, I think, yeah. And uh, so the, uh, the new car wash is up in the... Uh, the uh, Top right hand corner, I guess, right? Through, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. And we got a letter here from uh, one of the neighbors, Robert Park Baker, and they were just asking if we would take a look at some possibilities here. And what I'm seeing there is it looks like I got a, a marker here. Looks like these cars in here, right, are going to be lining up to get into the car wash and and the uh, and the uh, manual car wash as well and i'm just wondering once these cars get out now they're going to be stuck in some kind of a, a driving area and my question is is it possible that the owner can reconfigure this whole area here so that some of the cars are in line waiting to get in like and then have the car wash here so that when they come out, they have a place to park and dry their cars off. And in our letter, it says that the, uh, the noise mostly comes from the front of the car wash where the people enter. And I'm wondering, that way the, the noise would go to the, to the north where there is no residential. Is it possible to do something like that? Three, you, Mr. Mayor. That's, that's the first that I've heard of this idea. Um, I, I know that the car wash is, is set back um, from the residential property to the east is uh, intentionally. Um, it's intentionally not against that, that eastern property line. We have regulations that would have that set back from the residential uh, zone. So that's why that setback is there. Um, in terms of reconfiguring the, di the direction of travel, um, we, can, we can commit to having a look at that and, and we will return with a recommendation report at some point, so. Yeah, I mean, what I'm looking at here, I don't see that we're gonna change the boundary. The automatic car wash here, right here, would probably be the edge would be right in here. Right. So you still have your setback here and then the building would be in here. The same with this building, it would be over here. I mean, I don't know what this is. I didn't see this. This is the mechanical area, I guess. Yeah, we could, we could move a lot of that. But that's, and then, you know, we could help out the neighbor a little bit and uh, move the noise to the north and let the employees at Turkster Lumber complain about it. <laughs> through, through you, Mr. Mayor, was that um, correspondence provided to staff as well, or did that come directly? And that was at our desk. Uh, it's dated today, so I don't. Okay. So I certainly, presume, I presume that there'll be a delegation. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, we can take a look at that and other things that we hear tonight okay. and just, report just back thoughts. on it. I don't know if you can do it. You know, try to try to accommodate the neighbors a little bit. All right. Thank you very much. That's all I have, you, Mayor Redekop. Thank you. Any other councillors? Mr. Kernahan, uh, your report talks about the provincial policy statement, talks about the regional official plan, the town official plan, but in dealing with the provincial policy statement, you point out that um, 
the, uh, the objective is to focus future growth and development within existing urban settlement areas and to promote efficient development patterns that optimize the use of land, resources, and infrastructure. That's all presumably uh, based on a background of what's reasonable having regard to what already exists, I presume. That's correct, yeah. And, and in fact, you indicate in the regional policy uh, plan that uh, one of the objectives is to promote planned, orderly, efficient development of employment lands, which this would be classified as. So, so there is some sense of order in, in development schemes. Absolutely. And, and you also indicate that in the official plan, there's a policy that says new commercial development or redevelopment should be assessed in relation to community character and be appropriately located to serve as part of the neighborhood's existing or proposed fabric. So when you do, when you do your report, presumably you'll be bearing that in mind along with comments that you will hear from the neighbors, I presume. Absolutely. Okay. So this isn't a deal where somebody comes in with a proposal and there's no framework, there's no context within which you as a planner would be making recommendations. That's correct. Okay. So on this um, slide that we have there right now, the, the queuing of the cars for the car wash, that's on the existing residential parcel. Uh, no, if you look to the uh, right side of the screen about 90% over, there's a dashed line that runs up in north-south direction. That's the current property line um, between the, the commercial and the residential uh, designation and zoning. So that, that queuing would be occurring on the part of the site which is currently designated and zoned commercial. That's for the car wash? Up in the top right corner. Oh, I'm sorry, I was speaking to the restaurant. No, uh, the, a good portion of the car wash queuing is taking place on the area which is currently residential. Yeah, with my eyes, it looks like a solid line that runs from north to south on that okay. parcel. And, and that's the boundary of the residential parcel? That's correct. So that, 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 then, that then is eliminated as a, as a um, buffer for remaining residential uses. The owner's proposing to turn that into in fact, commercial. That's correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I will now ask if the proponent wishes to address council with respect to the plan. Please come forward, sir. Thank you. And I'm surmising you're Greg Terrace. I am him. Thank you. Good evening. Down is advance. There's a light on there, too. Thank you, Your Worship, mayors, uh, members of council. Uh, my name is Greg Terrace. I'm a planner with Urban Environmental Management. I'm the agent for the owner, uh, Mr. Quidwai. Um, Mr. Kernan's provided a very detailed uh, presentation of the proposal, and I'd just like to add a few uh, brief things uh, with regards to this. Um, there's been some questions about the component that would, is the residential that is being added. Uh, the, the portion to the east that's highlighted in light green is the residential component uh, and, and it's boxed in there. Uh, what we're proposing is approximately 125 feet uh, of the uh, rear of the property to be uh, added in as commercial use, although the whole, whole property would be rezoned commercial. Um, this is a very deep lot. It's approximately 200 feet deep, so we're looking to utilize the rear portion of it. <clears throat> and the front uh, is, uh, is a residential uh, on Disher Street, and this is uh, Mr. Quidwai would be using that as his personal residence, so he'd be continuing to maintain this as his residence, even though it is, would be rezoned to commercial. The uh, components of the rezoning um, is to use the rear portion of the residential. And so, as mentioned, it is the stacking lanes for the car wash, uh, the uh, mechanical room for the car wash, and the two car wash bays. One, a self-serve, is the one to the north, and then the portion of the south is the um, so, uh, automatic car wash. <clears throat> Four of the required parking spots uh, would also be included 
on the residential property just uh, along the north boundary of what is Mr. Quidwise's current residence. The other component is the restaurant, uh, as you can see to the uh, southwest corner of the property. And there's currently a residence there, uh, and that would be torn down. Uh, and also there's an existing automatic car wash that would be torn down. And that would be the area to create the restaurant and the drive-through lanes for the, um, for the restaurant. Uh, one of the things we're proposing is to have employee parking on the uh, four parking spots uh, that are um, in the residential area. Uh, our feeling is that there would be less uh, traffic because those cars would be parked for a longer period uh, as opposed to the cars that would be coming in and out of the restaurant where there'd be more movement. <coughs> Waste, uh, um, garbage and recycling would be managed indoors. There's a garbage room proposed to, at the northeast corner of the restaurant, so all, all waste would be managed indoors. Uh, there was questions regarding the landscaping. So what is proposed is that the entire site will be paved and landscaped. And the landscaping will include a two meter wide grass strip uh, on the area shown in green. As well, there'll be coniferous and deciduous trees planted and the uh, plantings are shown, the tree plantings are the lighter green color, as well as in the southwest and northeast corner would be additional tree planting. And then there's also evergreen and shrubbery planting along the south uh, side of the restaurant, along Disher Street and along the, um, between the restaurant and the drive-through, there'd also be uh, plantings. And between Gorham Road and the drive-through lane, there'd be additional shrubbery plantings near the restaurant. Um, the noise study was completed. And to meet the noise guidelines, a three meter high uh, noise barrier fence is required along the east, most of the east of the property line. So that would be from the northeast corner of the uh, property, the residential property south to the, um, where the uh, residential property is, it would move west and then down south to that solid line across there. That was identified as the area that was required to be a three meter high noise barrier fence. South of that to Disher Road will be a two meter high privacy fence. And then along the north side of the um, property, uh, between that and the Friendship Trail, will be a uh, lower fence, approximately 1.3 meters. The, the town has requested that that fence be lower. And so we're uh, just confirming with the town staff uh, exactly how high that fence should be. Um, the, uh, there was also a request to connect the property to the Friendship Trail. So a walkway to the convenience store area is shown at the northwest corner of the um, property that would have an opening in the fence and then allow it to connect to the Friendship Trail. With respect to the noise study, in addition to the three meter high noise barrier, um, the automatic car wash would only operate from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in order to assist in meeting the noise guidelines. Uh, the car wash doors will remain closed during the washing and drying cycle and new automatic car wash technology will be employed. So a, a specific type of uh, dryer and wash uh, equipment has been specified that, has, uh, uh, that, that could have low uh, noise impacts. And those, that equipment was considered by the consultant that undertook the uh, noise study for this project. Um, that's uh, really all I wanted to touch on uh, to add to Mr. Kernahan's presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairs. Uh, Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Mr. Terrace, um, I have a couple of questions for sure. you. Okay. I mean, we, we buy our homes because it's a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So we like to go home after a long day at work, and in the spring, in the summer, in the fall, you want to go to your sanctuary and sit mm -hmm. outside and enjoy the quiet still of, of the night. You want to breathe fresh air. And you want to watch the animals that traverse on the properties because we're in the wooded land. If, if I am a resident who now is going to have a car wash adjacent to their property line, regardless of the three meter high noise barrier fencing, mm -hmm. what do you suppose my sanctuary is going to sound like at that point? 
It is going to be motor vehicles on a continual basis. It is going to be the washers on a continual basis. And I'm going to smell the, the fumes of those cars on a continual basis. My sanctuary now does not become a sanctuary. I don't believe that the extra space that you require is necessary. I would be completely opposed to that. So I'm just putting that out there for you. So you did ask Mr. Terrace a question. Yes, my question The question, question had is, to do with what does he think uh, the impact is on your sanctuary exactly. of the noise. I'm not sure how to answer that, Mr. Mayor. I, I'm, we're proposing a, uh, an official plan and zoning amendment, and uh, we're working within the guidelines and in terms of noise and the ability to request rezoning and official plan amendments, and it would be up to council to determine those impacts. We've presented our application that we believe is in supports this application. Thank you, Your Worship. I want you to know that I'm pro-business. I'm a business owner myself. I'm pro-development. I, But at some point, you have to be a good corporate citizen. My question then is this three-meter high fence, the, the noise barrier, what type of construction will it be made out of? It has to be a solid fence with no gaps. The specific uh, um, construction material and type of construction has not been determined yet. That would be determined through the site plan approval stage. Councilor Butler? So it's quite possible it could be concrete? Uh, I won't say it won't be. I, I don't know at this point. Uh, Your Worship, uh, just two more questions sure. if you don't mind. No, no, so uh, looking at the barrier walls that you have drafted in front of us, um, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, on Disher Street uh, from the corner of Gorham through to where the green stops, and then there's a car just projecting uh, mm -hmm. slightly out, there's mm -hmm. a gap. That will be the drive-through area, correct? That there will the, be a fence, a three-meter fence on that side. I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not sure where you're referring to. On the to. bottom? Here, yes. On the <clears throat> shirt? Mm -hmm. That area right there, yes. That area, who's got the pointer? Sure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. So, so this area here will be all concrete. I'm sorry, from this point here, at this point here will be that three meter high fence? No, no. No, it will not. No, along the east property boundary. See the, almost looks like a cross. A sure. <laughs> There's a pointer on here. Is there a pointer? Okay, I don't want to shine in anybody's light. Now he's here. So. Oh, okay. Okay, so bottom one. three meter high fencing will be located where Starting I'm Starting at that point there, yeah. moving up, across, and up to the corners. Three meter high fencing. So in essence, Your Worship, through you to Mr. Terrace, in essence, the property that the owner will be living in will be protected by a three meter fence and adjacent to the landowner that's, that's the residence beside him. Um, but on Disher Street, there's nothing to protect the residents across the street? The lands, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, through you, the landscaping along the south side is proposed uh, as, as a, um, a vegetative buffer and barrier for the uh, residents to the south. So you have plantings in this area, new tree plantings, planting and landscaping along this side. I'm sorry, just one last question, yeah, I promise. No, go ahead. Um, so I'm just kind of curious, have you um, hired anybody to do a traffic study in the area? We, uh, Mr. Mayor, through you, uh, we were not uh, requested at the pre-consultation meeting that a traffic study was required, so no traffic study has been done. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other councillors? Councillor Passero. Um, thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. Terrace, for your explanations. The restaurant's being located where there's currently an automatic car wash, or at least at one point in time was an operating automatic car wash. Am I correct in that? That's correct. So I'm going on a couple of assumptions here and stop me when I mm -hmm. stop assuming correctly. So if we're putting a restaurant in its place, then we've deemed that the restaurant would then be more feasible as far as economically than the car wash, right? We're willing to displace the car wash to locate a restaurant. Am I right so far? 
Uh, do you, Mayor? Uh, no. No. Um, no, we're, we're pro. In fact, this is why we want to relocate the car wash on the property to that north east section and not only the car wash is located automatic car wash located here there's also a residence located here so both would be removed so it's I, clear. Yeah. I understand that okay but you need extra property to do the, the car wash because of the restaurant yes correct. so in my mind you've placed an emphasis on the restaurant versus the car wash I think our emphasis uh, is to maximize the commercial uh, uh, development potential of the property. By, but you're trying to maximize commercial development across a property that's not zoned commercial, correct? This is what we're requesting, yes. So you're kind of trying to put 10 pounds of sugar in a seven pound bag on the current property and you need some extra space. That that's, would be the reason why we're requesting the residential component to be incorporated to, to be able to accommodate all of the commercial uses that we would like to have on that property. Okay. If council was not in favor of changing the use from residential to mm -hmm. commercial, what would we see on the site? Would it be the restaurants or would it be the car wash? Uh, through you, you Mayor, we w uh, I would have to uh, review that with the owner to determine what uh, what would be the most feasible and appropriate uh, development then, excluding the residential component. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Terrence. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Pesero. Any other councillors? Councillor Luberts and then Councillor McDermott. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mayor Redekop. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. And I'm just, I'm just looking at this uh, queuing that you have on your drawing. Sure. And uh, I can see here where you have your queuing for your, your car wash coming in here. But you don't show any queuing here. You just see the cars are there. Where, how are these guys getting in here? And how are these guys getting in here? Are they all coming from this part? You're going to enter everybody in here? And then if you have a backup at the gas pumps, these guys are going to be on Gorham Road, are they not? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, the, um, the, the entrance there is the entrance from Disher and two entrances on Gorham Road and exits. So traffic to these existing pump islands can, would enter on either of those two uh, entrances and exits. Um, the cars that would be going to the car wash could enter from Gorham Road from the north entrance as well. They could enter from Disher and come up and queue that way. Uh, similarly, the cars in these pumps would, would come from this north entrance or could come from Disher up to the, uh, up to the pumps. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much for that. But um, I'm just using my own logic as to how I'm going to enter this building or this gas bar. And I'm thinking, if I enter here, I don't know what's in here. I, I'm going in there blind. I don't know if there's a lineup. And we all know ourselves that your car has a, a gas cap on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. So if I come in here, now I'm stuck because there's a bunch of cars there I can't get in. And I know that they're going to exit towards me. So now I'm kind of stuck. I'm having a real hard time trying to figure out how this traffic is all going to combine and flow smoothly because these guys coming out of here, they're going through this car wash and they're coming out here. They're either going this way or they're going this way. And these guys at the gas pump, if there's a lineup, where are you putting these people for the gas bar in the lineup? I mean, I've been to gas bars. Every one of them has a lineup at one time or another. We have a problem. All I can see is that you're going to end up on Gorham Road if you're coming in from this way. If you're coming in from this way, you have some room for a lineup. And if you come in from this way, you have room for a lineup. But if you're coming off Gorham Road, boy, we're going to have a problem. I, I'm, just, I'm just concerned about the traffic. Do you want to comment on that, Mr. Terrence? Um, just, I mean, one of the uh, reasons that uh, additional islands are being included is to reduce the um, 
potential for lineups by having more opportunity for vehicles to be able to access pumps. Right now, you have uh, four pumps, and that's going to double to eight. So you have uh, additional room for um, for gas uh, uh, to get gas and, and move in and move out of the uh, of the facility. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. I understand that now. Is it possible that you could just add those pumps over here? That's what they did up here at Canadian Tire. When you pull in, there's a gas pump, a gas pump, a gas pump. Could we not do that here? And then we could eliminate all of this, and we could maybe move your car wash over here. Yeah. The, uh, I would uh, speak with the owner about that, but my, um, right now the, the owner has actually gone through a separate site plan approval stage, and, and those were provided and submitted within the context of the commercial property already so those yeah. those pumps are, are actually already approved uh, if I'm correct yes so that that really is not part of this application I understand sure. that yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been approved but he hasn't done nothing yet right not yet no yeah but, so and now you're asking us to uh, take away this this residential so that you can put your pumps there I understand what yeah. happened here yeah. yeah they put the cart before the horse it sounds to me they asked for this here change. They got the change, and now I, I understand. But I'm just saying, right. is it possible? Because I I see a disaster in the making here when it comes to traffic. I, I I'm sorry, but that's just the way I see it. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Any yes? Did you want to comment? I would just say we will await uh, council and staff's recommendation and direction to us in terms of what we should consider. Councilor Lubrich, are you finished? Yeah. Councilor McDermott. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Just uh, uh, a question about the um, the car wash. Mm -hmm. So I understand there's there's uh, car washes that you have that uh, are like wind tunnels. Some of them are, are quite noisy. You're telling me that this will probably be more like state-of-the-art, uh, quiet type of uh, wash. Do you know what kind of uh, car wash he is putting in there? I would... Uh, like, if it's a... So. The state of the art mm -hmm. one that's supposedly quiet. Uh, is, there, is there a name brand or is there some sort of uh, patent to it that we might be familiar with? Mr. Mayor, through you, could I ask the owner because he's more yes. sp uh, specific with the with the specifications of it? Thank you. My name is Najib Kedwai. Uh, it's uh, we already submitted that uh, specification for that. Uh, that what's going to be put in there. It's going to be touchless and uh, brush. You have a choice for that to select which one you want and with the dryer on it. We already have, mentioned, we already have submitted the spec for the, what kind of car wash we're going to put in. So it's, uh, it's a very new thing. It's, it came out this year. So it's uh, touchless plus it has a, a brush. As you see it on Canadian Tire, it has a brush one. And the one I'm going to have it, you're going to have a customer can select touchless or the brush. And that shutter will be closed in there. And that's what we got that uh, noise report from them, that how much is going to be noise. And the major factor is that the dryer on it. That's what makes the noise. If worse to worse, we can remove the dryer from there, and there's no issue after that. But we like to add to the community. There's no dryer in this area. I like to add to it. I like to build a community. If you guys don't want it, I can remove it from there. Mr. McDermott. Thank you. Anything further? Yes. Very much. Um, any other counselors? Terrence, I've got a couple of questions. So yes. the, um, the balance of the current residential property that will remain residential, what's the depth of that? Do you know offhand? It's about 75 feet, 22 meters. Okay. And it looks like there are essentially two points of access that will be utilized. One off of, well, two, I guess, off of Gorham Road up at the top, uh, up at the nor north where the existing gas uh, Body. pumps are. Yes. And then one off of Disher Street. So that this plan... I believe would anticipate that traffic will be coming into and leaving the um, drive-through 
uh, potentially from Disher Street. That's correct, and that, uh, Mr. Mayor, that is an existing uh, access at this point as well. Right, yes. there's no, there's no, no current drive-through on the property, correct. there's no restaurant, there's yes. no, um, I guess there's maybe a small store. The, um, the additional pumps that you have, they almost require somebody to come in or leave by Disher Street. Those two pumps on the north in the middle of the parcel. You, it, once you come in, if you come in from Gorm, you're going to be leaving off of Disher or vice versa, I presume. Uh, yes, I would uh, agree with that. The, if you came in from Disher and were to uh, had a um, fill tank on your uh, left side, so you pull up to the right pump, you would likely then proceed out to Gorham Road. Right. Um, okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So now we're going to proceed to hear from anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the application. Then I guess we can proceed to uh, hear from anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the application. Well, yeah. So when you approach the, um, the dais, would you please provide us with your name and address, please? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, my name is Eilish BC. I live on 3830 Disher Street. Um, I think I'm four doors down from the gas station and I've lived there for 13 years. I have family members who have lived there for 50. Um, we just found out about this plan. It's been rumored for many years. We just found out about it about two weeks ago. And um, even though things have been going on on the gas station, modifications have been made for the past two years and it's still not finished. And uh, it's becoming an eyesore to us. Um, we have a couple of concerns and complaints. Some of our complaints are that the property isn't taken care of. Um, People are picking up garbage, construction garbage, that is flying into the neighbor's yards and the neighbors are having to pick that up themselves. The grass was recently just mowed for the first time. Um, there are two mounds of dirt on the property that have been there for the past two years. Um, also, there a lot of times they are blocking uh, the access to the, um, the access road that is by the bike path that a lot of us neighbors on that side of Disher Street use. And a lot of times because of the mounds of dirt, the trucks that come in and out of there, the bigger transport trucks, actually have to use Disher Street to back up on, which is already a busy street. And we have kids on that street. I walk my dogs on that street. Other people walk their dogs on that street. So it's a bit of a safety concern. Um, we're worried that these things will persist and will get worse with the expansion of the residential home turning into commercial property. Also, even though, yes, there has been a noise study done, we're still worried about that. And once again, as Councilwoman Butler has already pointed out, the smell is a concern too of the fumes. Um, and like I said, the traffic, like has been mentioned, the traffic going on to Disher Street and it already being busy, we're worried about that being unsafe for us. And uh, like has been mentioned, traffic going on to Gorham, that we're worried about that being a bottleneck situation like it is in Crystal Beach at the Tim Hortons there. Um, and the other thing that we're a little bit worried about is there's a gas station that's supposedly going up across the street on Gorham Road they're going to be competing. What if one fails? What if both fail? Is it just going to be an eyesore there with gas pumps like it happened in, Bridge, in uh, Fort Erie? So we're worried about that and that lowering the price of our homes. Um, also, the property across from the gas station on Disher Street, a petitioned to be a uh, commercial status and was denied because they were worried about traffic. And we're a commercial resident street, uh, we're a resident street, and we 
bought our homes as a resident street, uh, being on resident street, wanting peace, wanting quiet, and we expect it to stay that way. We don't expect it to for the next home over from the gas station to turn into commercial and you know, for it to continue after that, we are worried about it being a bit of a snowball effect too. And because of that, we have prepared a different proposal as has already been mentioned by a couple of other council uh, members. There are other ways of doing this without encroaching on the residential property. So we've created this plan here and there's only a few Minor differences, one is that the restaurant is pushed back. Um, the other one is that the gas pumps, we are negating one gas pump because we don't feel it's necessary, especially if there's a gas station going up across the street. And also, even though it is a busier place, it's never been busy enough that it's been so backed up that we need eight gas pumps. The other thing is, is that the, um, Car wash, we've put it down to a single lane instead of a double lane. Um, a lot of gas stations do this. Uh, it just splits at the end into a double lane and it works out great for them. Uh, the drive through for the south side would be going around the back instead of around the front and it would not be going on to Disher Street. Um, the south side would uh, be where you order and the east side where you pick up your food and the exit road would be big enough for transport trucks to go in and out for gas, gasoline and other things. And also it would be directed an exit so that there is no oncoming a crossing oncoming traffic. Um, the parking lot there can be removed for the diesel fuel pump and it still leaves ample parking in front of the restaurants, uh, the restaurant and the store, and also having employee parking in the back. And lastly, we definitely want a fence regardless going around the entire thing. That way it doesn't encroach on other people's property. We're not worried about noise as much, even though there's still that concern. We're not worried about light, which is a concern of other neighbors across the street and Disher Street. We're not worried about garbage being thrown or going on other people's property or the um, public land space. And um, that way we don't have people going on and off of Disher Street and we can still keep our residential home. We don't want to deter business being done. We don't want him to fail. We, we want him to succeed because if, we, if he succeeds in the end, we all succeed. And we do want to see our community grow. We just want there to be consideration for us and for the fact that we bought our homes residential. We expect it to stay quiet and peaceful and we expect it to say, stay a residential home. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, can I just get the spelling of your name? Sure, E-I-L-I-S-H. Your last name? Barkhouse. Oh, B okay, you said B-C. Because I hate spelling Barkhouse Coolis. Well, for the record, we need your whole name. B-A-R-K. Yeah, Barkhouse. Yep, H-O-U-S-E. Space C O U L I S. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, that was a very thoughtful presentation. It was well done. And Thank I you. appreciate the fact that you were mindful in um, how you approached it. And I know that your father had designed um, uh, much of the um, um, consideration for relocation. Um, and uh, I noticed that you put your own spin on it and highlighted the areas, which is impressive. So thank you. And I, I, I wanted to say that, um, and, and drive the point home, that none of the residents are opposed to development and progress. And um, they are looking to coexist and to find a compromise that suits both the owner and the residents that are there. And, um, and I think that you've done a great job in in telling us that story. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone have any questions of Ms. Barkos Krulis? Councilor Zanko, then Councilor Pasuro. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I just wanted to say the same thing. Uh, normally, when we get delegations, um, they're obviously opposed to having commercial development in their area. So for me to see that yourself and, and your neighbors have 
compiled this plan and it, it shows me clearly that you're, you know, you're, you're open to development. Definitely. Um, just not necessarily the original plan that has lots going on. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for that because uh, from my perspective, it's very refreshing to see. Thank you. Councilor Basiro. Thank you, Worship. I was making a lot of notes for your speaking, so I apologize if you already answered what I'm going to ask and I missed it. But something on your diagram caught my attention. I'm just wondering what the rationale is, so maybe it is something we need to look at. It's in the left-hand side where it says, ditch to be filled in. Can you oh, expand on why that comment is there? Yes. Um, previously, it, it was not this owner. It was the previous owner dug a ditch there, and that is actually a road access road. And um, all us neighbors on that side of Disher Street use that road access to get into our backyards for various reasons. Some people have a boat and they store their boat back there. We use it just to get into the backyard to drop stuff off. Um, so we would like to see that filled in. Um, that might be a town issue though and not on this gentleman. Okay, Th thank you for clarifying that. So we, we can follow up with that with the appropriate staff and just see if it is appropriate to continue that as a road allowance or if it's not supposed to be a road allowance, but maybe there shouldn't be a ditch anyways, but we'll follow it up and see where it should be. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you. Any other counselors? Um, in the, the bottom of the drawing, there's a circle just um, on the left-hand side, uh, just at the end of the red line. What is that? That is a um, little sign with a uh, bicycle. It's just an advertiser. Um, we're, we're not asking him to get rid of that. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition? Good evening, sir. Um, good evening, Your Worship, members of the council. Uh, my name is Robert Baker. My wife and I, Vicki, own the property at 3842. Uh, we would be one house away from where they're going to rezone the, the property, the residential property. And it was me that made up the little note that was handed out to each councillor. And I, the councillor has been very perceptive on seeing the problems that we see. And my concerns are based in three areas. Number one being noise. Now, they did do a noise study. The noise study says that the the decibel level at the entrance to the car wash would be 93 decibels, DBA, which is basically a lawnmower running right here. That's 93 decibels. So that's my concern with noise. Now, they've, they've stipulated a fence and they've stipulated hours of operation, but obviously there's a noise problem there. And I would like to see and know what the noise is going to be in my backyard. I'm not that far away. We need to know what that's going to be, not approve it and then have me try and fight later. We need to know what that noise is going to be. So that would be very, very, very helpful to me. Now, I did suggest I'm not in favor of this proposal, and I will say that, but I did suggest that if this thing should go and should happen, that turning that car wash a few degrees would, would definitely help. The side of a car wash is not the noisy side. It's the entrance that's the noisy. I worked in a car dealership. I, I worked with a car wash before. It's the, end, the ends that make the noise. So that would be a great help if that, if that could happen. Um, the second thing that we're worried about is light. Now you can light a place like that in several ways. Great big high ones, you, you see gas stations as you go along, you can see them from kilometers away. It's like a light, you know, well lit area. So I think, Council, if any of, of improvement or any, anything that has to be done there, please look at lighting. Light his grounds, light everything else as little as possible. I see the stars in my backyard. I have rabbits. You know, why we have wild rabbits, I've got chipmunks. This is a, this is a residential area. I have, a, I have a lot with 200 feet. That's right, my lot's 200 feet. And I work six days a week and many, many hours so that I can retire in that nice property. So light is another thing. We need to look at that in the future and the smells. Unfortunately, the prevailing wind is, comes down our Lake Erie and it's anything that comes from his property is going to be affect ours. And so I don't know what mitigation could be done as far as smells go, but I ask council to use everything in their power 
to mitigate any kind of, you know, distress to our lives. It shouldn't be that way. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Baker. Do any members of council have any questions? Um, you've supplemented your written comments, Councilor Pasuro. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, Mr. Baker. If this goes a little bit further, I'm, I always like to ask delegates certain questions so we know where you stand when and if information does come back to us. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm glad to see you did the same research I did to see that it is a lot more. Uh, <laughs> yes, I have, I have a nice yes. chart in front of me. So what then in your research would be an acceptable decibel level for you in your backyard if this development were to proceed? Uh, daytime, 50 to 55 dBA. From your yard? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other counselors? Thank you very much, Mr. Baker. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition to the application? Good evening, sir. Hi. My name is Gord Shaw. I am the neighbor right beside um, 3854, ours is 3848 Disher. My wife and myself, Amy, um, we aren't long, my wife's a long-term resident. I'm a recent import from Toronto. Um, and I see a number of issues. The first one that I see is not to do with necessarily um, the applicant, but the fact that Disher Street is a patchwork quilt of small patches of tar and asphalt. It's been that way for a number of years. They have not repaved that street. It's living basically an old life. It's probably got old sewers underneath it. There's, so there, this, this issue is a town issue in regard to it. The culverts in that area are not dug out. The water flow already in that area is going into our backyards. Rob has a pond in his backyard already because uh, the drainage is not going anywhere. And what will happen when you change that or you add additional uh, load on that system, it's going to have problems. It needs to be either redone, repaired, or improved. Just so that I'm clear on this. So that we're all clear. So you're talking about the road, you're talking about the drainage? Disher Street. The, plan the, the whole okay. structure of the street and the culvert sewers that are involved in that area have not been maintained whatsoever. To show that's have, an important issue, and, I, and I, I think we all appreciate what you're saying about that, but you're here this evening to... And I'm, I'm, going, I'm moving on to that because this, this kind of ties into it. Thank you. Transit uses that street. Um, it's also the trucks from this... Uh, the company itself that used that street, we actually sit and watch the truck load forward, go in, back up, go forward in the street, and then back into his complex. Um, and you just, as you're watching these trucks go in, safety is an issue. They sometimes come pretty close to hitting the cars out there already. He has a limited storage of gasoline from what I understand on that on his property I don't know how big the, the actual storage tank but when you're adding additional tanks or, or additional pumps that expectation is that it's going to add more fuel he's going to need more fuel in that area to run that business with all the additional pumps and it's it's a future expectation that you'd have to be you know aware of um, there's one tank if you look turn on the, the overhead in regard to that I'm not sure which one he shows his tank sitting there between the drive-through area, and I think it's the um, convenience, store. convenience store. There is one storage tank there, and over the years that we've lived there, you actually see them usually in the wintertime. They have to come in and drill. There's something's going on in those tanks because they're drilling down into that area. There's something, I don't know what it is, but there seems to be a, a well driller kind of a thing going down in there. We've seen it. Um, th we do need... Um, a traffic study, both on Gorham and on Disher. The noise study itself has been done. I'm, I'm not conversant with how that uh, 93 or 50 impacts, but I know there will be impact on us directly. We're the neighbor immediately to the east of that property. There will be no peace in our backyard. Why not make this instead of a drive-through, 
a drop-in and pickup, like a lot of other restaurants are in this Fort Erie area. If you look along Garrison Street or Garrison Road, most of those businesses operate on a drop-in, pickup, or now they're actually getting phone-in and pickup. You, you see that at McDonald's now, they're, they're, out, they're bringing that kind of service in. It's, it's, as Eilish said, it's been a year and a half or two years since they started the construction on it, and he's working as he can to get it done, and we know he is. Traffic is not safe for walkers, bikers, or the, the French. I heard someone here say that there would be no impact on the people that are walking the Friendship Trail. I disagree with that completely. I think there will be, because they can't even get across the street right now. You can stand on that spot for 10, 15 minutes trying to get across Guam Road already. You won't get across. There's going to be somebody hit and killed on that because they're starting to run and people aren't even stopping. If they see a brake a break on their bicycle, they just shoot through there. So the additional traffic that this is going to promote, someone may get hurt from it. I have a concern about the proximity of the, we've recently had the propane, or he's moved the propane tank from one area closer to the fence on 3854. The propane tank was further back and it's now been moved right over to the, on the property area, property line. I, just, I wish I had your little map up there, you could see it itself, but the propane tank has been moved. More business, more tanks, more trucks, more gas storage are going to be required in that business. Getting to the house. If he's keeping the house in regard, it's got to be brought up to code. Residential, why not? Oh, this is a comment which has already been made. I'm going to drop that one. The trees, those trees are, are all there. It's you're aware there's one very old tree in there. Um, I'm not adverse to losing that tree. I think it's going to come down very shortly because the whole tree is kind of separating in the middle of the tree itself. So although it is a heritage tree, I can see some problems coming up for the neighbors for that one tree. And my understanding was uh, from Roly and from the owner after Roly and even from um, Najib is that that large tree will be coming down. The bulk of the four trees that run on that property are on his property to the greatest extent. I have about a third of that uh, century tree and he's got about two-thirds of that century tree. The very end tree on the far end is half and half between the two of us and the two middle trees are on his property. With restaurants, I know there's indoor storage of the garbage, rats. They have been a problem in the past in town. The more people, the more garbage, not everybody's going to throw their garbage into the, the inside storage. We're going to find quite a bit of the garbage floating down the street. It'll just kind of migrate down. With larger walls comes graffiti. So there's consequences of whatever you do in town. There are a number of old trailers on the property, and this adds to what Eilish was saying. If those trailers were removed, there'd be a lot more room so we could leave that one property, 3854 residential, as a buffer, whether it's a green zone or whether it is a residential area, it gives a buffer in there for us as neighbors. People on the south side of um, Disher Street have concerns in regard to the lights of the, of the uh, vehicles coming in and out of that because the, they're going to be constantly illuminated by car lights as they're exiting on the Disher. Now, the town staff and communications has indicated there is low level interest in this. We received some information by email. No, I don't, no I, that was a different, that was another. Uh, uh, that's what it said when I read it. It said it was a low level interest. There wasn't much of a, a resistance to this and that a lot of the um, re, um, recommendations or applications were within um, the plans. Just for clarification, where did you read that? 
It was in an email that was sent to us. I see, okay. From Mr. Kernahan? I'm sorry, I'm, I might be misspeaking. Just, just, as a, just as a point of clarification, uh, last week when the agenda was posted on the website, we sent the report out to all the people who uh, signed in at the public meeting. And what I had indicated in that email was that due to your interest in this application, I'm sending you a link to the administrative report that council will consider. Um, but in that report, it, or in that email, it said there was a low level interest from what I recall. I may be wrong, but... Well, so, Mr. Shaw, we had two uh, public meetings before us. Each of those were what would be considered um, low public interest applications. And so, aside from the report that we get to provide us with information about those applications, staff has gone ahead and made recommendations because they appear to be low interest outside of the actual applicant. Your, this particular matter, uh, there is no recommendation made by staff because, and that's an indication to council, that they know that there are there are issues that the public has to raise. So this, um, if you were of that impression, we're not treating this as a low interest application. This is very high interest. Okay, uh, because I was quite, I felt very strongly about that, that there wasn't. Um, that completes my presentation. Thank you very much. Any members of council have any questions? I just had one point then for clarification, Mr. Shaw. You, you mentioned about um, um, an alternative, drop in, take out, or something yeah, of that nature, that, call in, take out. Take away there's the- There's still traffic though. There's, there's still traffic that has There's to still traffic, but he would have spaces out the front to take uh, instead of- As opposed to a drive through as, uh, The extra space to be there would also take away some of the need to have the trucks U-turning, similar with the presentation that Eilish and her father gave in regard to um, changing the ultimate plan. In your mind, though, even a change of that nature wouldn't eliminate, I presume, the need for a traffic study? No, it wouldn't. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to speak? <clears throat> Good um, evening, sir. Mike Miner, uh, 3859 Disher Street. I know it's going to be a lot of uh, repetitive, but uh, I did want to say something. Sure. My name is uh, Mike Miner, and I've raised my family across the street from this proposed project for 25 years now. I have lived in Ridgeway a total of 42 years, and I've seen many businesses come and go because this is a small and quiet community. Being uh, small and quiet are just a couple of reasons I do not want to see this project go through. I just want to touch on a few. Uh, traffic flow seems to be a big issue. Uh, to my knowledge, again, um, there has been no traffic study performed because this is an extremely busy area around the proposed project. From mid-June to Labor Day, it's very hard to even get around in this area. Gorham Road is the only direct road that takes you to Crystal Beach and the lake itself. From a safety point of view for first responders, fire, ambulance and police, you will see an increase in response time due to the increased traffic. Infrastructure. Are the sewers and water lines going to be able to withstand the added volume and pressures because of the increase of public use? The population alone in Ridgeway after Labor Day drops off considerably. This business might not be able to sustain at all in the slow times. In the unfortunate event of this business going bankrupt, do we have to stare at these deserted buildings for years to come? There's an LCBO trailer that is up the road. It's for the second season in a row. And it's only here during the uh, warm seasons. After that, it's gone for the winter. Uh, these are reasons why I don't, I believe that, uh, I don't know if it, if it really can make it there. I spoke with Wayne at Turkstra. He said it was almost the worst winter uh, he's seen in years. The same with the manager at uh, Value Mart, uh, Jeff. I spoke with him. At the meeting in the atrium, I was told that there could be no drive-throughs uh, possible onto Gorham Road. And uh, yet the gentleman across the street, he can only have drive-throughs onto the Gorham Road. That didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. With a drive-through uh, exit onto Disher Street, with everything like exiting onto Disher Street, it's a nightmare to get out in, 
uh, from our driveways, which are directly across the street. Ice went on the, um, on the diagram there, the exit to the drive-through is directly in front of my house. I will, like um, Gord just said there, I have all the, I have lights on my house all the time and the traffic and I'll just, it's just a nightmare to get off my uh, driveway. Um, and again, I, I, I want to see you, I want to see you make it um, as a good corporate citizen, of course. I would like to see the restaurant moves back. I would like to see the drive through gone. I would like to see the residents remain residential and also add more, I believe it's gonna be 60 by 100 or something like that. I'd like to see that around 120 if possible. Um, so that's all I have to. Uh, Thank you. Could you just clarify that last point? Uh, the, the residence is supposed to be 60 by not even 100. Oh, right. Okay. I believe. Um, our lots are all about 120. Their lots on that side are even like 200. So you're suggesting if there's any change there, it should be greater depth. Greater depth would be great. Um, and please leave it residential. I don't want to see that building down. It's going to act as a noise buffer um, for that, I believe. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Miner. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Mr. Miner. Um, just a, a couple of points of clarification. Your house is directly, directly across the street from the entrance on Disher Road to the facility. Yes, it is. And your bay window faces that way. So when you're yes, relaxing in your living room, you're not just talking about the lights that will be stationary at that location to highlight that this is a gas station, a drive through and et cetera. You're also going to be bombarded by all the car lights that are going through the drive through So how fair not is that to you? Not at all. Not at all. It's not fair at all. That's the reason I want to. Secondary question, if you don't mind. Your no, worship. not at all. Um, the tanker trucks that you are speaking of, um, if you could just elaborate um, a little bit more about the trouble that you have ex experienced so far in terms of those tanker trucks coming to the ditch line and actually going onto your drive and doing some damage. Can you just elaborate a little bit about that, please? Well, the, uh, as they're exiting, um, they have to come wide. To get onto Gorham Road, they have to come wide um, onto my street. And they have to come around so far that they actually end up into my ditch. And they, they're breaking away all the concrete around the culvert. Is, is that what you mean? And they actually drive right in, down into the ditch. So... There's just too much going on um, in, in this area. The whole thing is just, it, it, there's just not that much space there uh, for this. There's no, there's no room for that truck to even, that's the reason um, all the snow pile, they have to go around all the snow all the time, end up down in my ditch. And it's tough enough to, to uh, cut a ditch with the grass and stuff like that. So that's, I just, I just needed to uh, be be different. Um, like I say, I'm not against what he wants to do. I, just, I think we need to relook at different things. Uh, if we could get rid of that drive-through, um, all that exiting, and find some way to, like, even if it could be filled in, uh, my area, something like that. Um, because everything's just chipping away. I mean, it, it's got to be redone as, as it is right now. Councilor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I, just um, to make a comment, I, I agree with you that something should be done to help you. And, um, and, and to say the least, that um, it would be a nightmare for infrastructure, I would believe as well, to have damaged ditches uh, on a continual basis. Mm -hmm. So thank you for your presentation. I really appreciate your time. Thank you.
Any other counselors? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address council in opposition to this application? I think we have a pretty good uh, understanding of the of the concerns and issues. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward? If not, then I'm going to declare this uh, public meeting closed. So the next steps so that you're aware of is that we have an information report which we'll be uh, speaking to later on this evening, maybe not that much later on. And staff will ultimately uh, take all of the information that's been provided by both the applicant and those who spoke in opposition and will uh, eventually provide us with some recommendations as to what they think uh, would be appropriate. Ultimate decision is made by council. Okay. So this meeting is closed. That then takes us to the consent agenda. Are there any reports that anyone wishes removed from the consent agenda? If there are none, um, Um, I'd I'd I think I'd like to take out IS-25 because I've got a few questions with respect to that. So um, we'll proceed with uh, the, Councillor Nutt, you've moved the consent agenda less IS-25. Any questions or comments with respect to the item, the remainder of the reports that are in there? Guess I've got a, if there are none, uh, Mr. Walsh, um, the report with respect to the tree planting program, I understand that, that, um, there's uh, anticipation that there will be a, a further, some further consultation by uh, staff with respect to some of the community groups and uh, other organizations, and then there's a, a further report that's to come forward. Uh, certainly, Mr. Mayor, on, uh, based on our discussions today, um, I don't think this, this report. Uh, 25 is out of the package. IS-22 is in. So. I, am I missing something? IS-25 is out of the package. Oh, I see. Okay. IS-22. The tree planting uh, report. Sorry, Mr. Walsh. So I'm, we're, I'm back on track. Did you forget the question? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Who's on first? <laughs> exactly. Um, as we spoke today, I think the report misses, uh, misses the point of your request from a few weeks ago. And uh, we will be returning with, a, uh, with an updated information report again on what we can do to affect the reforestation uh, of Fort Erie in whole, not just on municipal properties. Right. And uh, I, I think part of certainly what happened with the tree, um, the tree uh, program, the tree giveaway program, was a, an indication of how significant this uh, issue seems to be to the residents of Fort Erie. Yes, it it, uh, it indicated that uh, to to staff's point, given the the effort uh, that we had to put into it and the monies the town expended, it was an extreme success. Uh, so we plan on uh, continuing it every spring until demand ceases. Uh, further, we're looking into an an event this fall. Um, we're we're not sure the logistics of it if we can get trees. Uh, in this manner, but if it's possible, we would like to do a smaller version this fall as well. Thank you. Are there any other? Councillor Pissero. Thank you, Your Worship. To that same report, I, I know in the report that uh, it does not recommend us taking any money from the, def, um, the removal side and putting it into the planting side, um, but given the success of the program and your comments, Mr. Walsh, and I guess it's not directed to you, but to Mr. Jansen behind me. Um, if council was interested in having an event in the fall and we needed to find a few thousand dollars to facilitate that, uh, where would those dollars come from? Mr. Jansen or Mr. Walsh, I think, I think we've already determined that, that there is money available, have we not? Yeah, um, although we do have a removal budget, it's, it's very large in, large in comparison to what it would cost to host an, an, another event. So we would take funds from one of the remaining, from that account, and slide it over to the replanting, which wouldn't really affect, uh, to a great degree, our removals. Okay, so that kind of slightly speaks against what the report kind of went into at the end, which was 
leave it as is and we'll revisit this another day. But if you're comfortable with that, Mr. Walsh, then I'm comfortable with that. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, Councilor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Mr. Walsh uh, for putting this program together. I, I talked to a lot of residents who were there, you know, with their chairs at seven o'clock in the morning waiting for <laughs> it to start. And um, I was uh, probably one of the last ones to show up at around 10 o'clock and there were four trees left and I luckily got one. So thank you. And I'll be there in the fall as well. <laughs> well, and, and I know that there were people showing up after 11 o'clock and the staff stayed here just to let them know that everything went very well and they were hoping to maybe do something in the fall. So it was a very successful program. Are there any other questions with respect to any other reports that are left in the consent agenda? If not, I'll call the question. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried. So can I have a mover for IS-25? Councilor Pasiro? Um, right, does any, do any members of council have any questions with respect to that? I did, and uh, they're of a general nature. And they relate to uh, the aspect of the contract administration. And they relate, Mr. Walsh, to the, this whole um, area where we tender for uh, engineering design and, and I believe request some type of information with respect to the cost of contract administration, supervision, in the original tender, is that correct or how, how exactly does that work? Because it's almost inevitable that whoever does the design work as the engineer ends up with the contract administration. I think there's some logical reasons for that, but I'm, I'm wondering um, whether it turns out to be extremely competitive um, the way we're doing it now or whether there's something that we could do to make it um, more competitive from a cost perspective. Do you have any comments on that? Yes, uh, thank you. In the uh, when when the town issues an RFP for engineering services, uh, we ask for um, costs on all phases of construction or all phases of work that we we expect under the assignment. Um, the cost for for this project in in particular was considered wholly, which includes the uh, the fees we're being asked to approve tonight. Um, that phase was not approved previously, but it was considered in selecting uh, uh, Robinson Consultants for the, for the original assignment. So when we review a report where there's a recommendation with respect to uh, awarding design, uh, engineering design work, um, why are we not also then provisionally awarding the construction um, and uh, supervision work at the same time? Or uh, we, f we find it easier to uh, make a recommendation on the award for services during construction. Uh, at the time of construction, the scope of work is, is much more well known and defined and the consultant can put a better number on, on what uh, their expected fees are. When we ask for uh, an estimate of fees at the beginning of a job, it's it's based on loose knowledge of what uh, we as town staff expect the job to be. Um, as we proceed through a job, uh, the scope of work typically changes. Right, which would mean the, the cost of the engineer's work would go up based on the scope. It's been identified. Not necessarily. In in the case uh, of IS-25, the fees being asked to uh, uh, be approved are actually less than what was uh, originally estimated. Okay. Um, I do know that this is, I believe the report suggests this is phase one engineering work. There's a reference to phase two work. Will there be additional engineering uh, costs with respect to phase two? Yes, there will be. And where will that leave us then in terms of the budget allocated for this particular project? We still expect to be within budget. So you would anticipate that the additional engineering fees will be less than $100,000? Uh, yes, as well as, the, uh, as well as the work. As well as the construction? Yeah. So that's a minor part then of, of the, uh, this whole project? That's correct. 
Um, okay, thank you very much, Mr. Walsh. Councillor Nutt. Thank you, Your Worship. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Walsh, can you explain why the company being awarded the contract came in at 50% of the cost of the other two? This makes me really nervous considering the trouble we've had with Catherine Street. Um, are we going to see a number of change notices that are going to, is this project going to run cost into cost overruns? That That's when I look at this tender, I have to question how can they be 50% cheaper? Mr. Walsh. In, in this case, um, in this case, I don't share your concerns. If it was a, a completely open tender call, uh, I, I would share those concerns. But these, uh, these firms were pre-qualified, and on that basis, I can only assume it's uh, supply and demand on their part. The, uh, the, four con or the four contractors that were invited are all quality firms, and uh, we expect the same from their work. Councillor Nutt. I'm going to support the report, but this makes me really nervous, and if it comes to cost overruns on this, I can't be in favor of approving anything. I mean, there's such a difference in price right now. I'd rather they verify that that's going to be the cost than us run into another situation where we have to have closed session meetings and talk about cost overruns on a project. Uh, Mr. Walsh, any, any further comment on that? No, not at this time. So if they sign the contract, um, presumably there is a um, bond, performance bond with respect to that? There, there are performance bonds as well as there is a, uh, a contingency item uh, built within the tender. Well, that, that would, but we're expecting that they're going to do this work on the basis of the contract or the tender that they've submitted, the bid they've submitted. So I understand there's contingencies. That would be if there were some problems with respect to some aspect of the job, maybe change in the scope or some unanticipated items. Correct, not the work that's... That, that's correct, yes. Okay. Councillor Nutt, still uncomfortable? Um, I'm about as comfortable as I'm going to be with this, I guess, until uh, it gets underway. Um, you said there will be a part two to this, Mr. Walsh? Yeah. Is that going to be placed out for bid, or will that be um, sole source awarded to the winning bidder on this one? So I think the engineering will be the same engineer. That's correct. But uh, in terms Ro of the construction. Ro Robinson is undertaking the design, to phase two of this. If I may correct myself, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I said the construction would be under 100,000. I was incorrect. Uh, we're expecting another 800,000 in, con in construction. That's identified in table three project costs of the report, um, as well as uh, expected uh, further con ad fees construction and administration fees. Uh, and I've talked myself out of the question, which was, what was the question again? Is phase two <laughs> going to be bid out separately? Yes, sorry, phase two will be, will be tendered separately for construction. Okay. Thank you for your uh, honesty and uh, candor. Uh, Councillor, not anything further? I'm a little more comfortable now, thank you. Okay, perfect. Anyone else? All those in favor of the report? That is unanimous. That then takes us to Planning and Development Services, Councillor Passero. I'll hand the chair to you. Thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Walsh, uh, maybe you can take a little break for Planning and Development Services. Go right into reports. PDS 32 2018 regarding proposed zoning bylaw amendment 1201 Ridge Road North Scott Hunter. This is on the heels of the public meeting we had earlier, moved by Councillor McDermott. That is on the floor for comments or questions, uh, noting a conflict of interest from his worship. Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. PDS 33 2018, proposed zoning bylaw amendment for 396 Ridgeway Road, William Cutler as the owner. Once again, on the heels of the public meeting earlier, a mover for that room. Moved by Councillor Zanko, thank you. Comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. PDS 34-2018, proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment 260 to 262 Gorham Road and 3854 Disher Street, put forward by Urban and Environmental Management Inc. Greg Terrace as the agent on behalf of Lucky Gas, Najib Quidvoy as the owner. 
a mover for that reports for information purposes, moved by Councillor Butler. Comments or questions to that report? Uh, we're gonna go Councillor Butler, Nuts, Luberts, and Zanko. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I have a couple of questions and um, some recommendations that I'd like to make as well. So the, the first question, if you can direct it to the right person with respect to what Mr. Shaw had brought up, which was an interesting um, perspective with respect to the drainage um, situation on Disher Street. And um, I, I'd kind of like to know the perspective of, of the infrastructure services, what their thoughts are uh, with respect to that being a, a problem. Mr. Walsh, the break is over. Uh, to to Councillor Butler's point, kind of anything that's going to be done to this road because of this development and anything that should be done to this road regardless of whether development proceeds given the comments made by the delegate. Uh, Mr. Chair, the, uh, any works on Disher are, are not contemplated to the best of my recollection in the 10-year capital forecast currently. Um, as Council's aware, we have retained Golder Associates to undertake a, uh, a road condition survey. So we will be uh, generating a new resurfacing list uh, by the end of summer. And uh, Disher may be on that list. In the short term, it may not be. Before you go to Ms. Uh, Councillor Butler's second uh, question, is there a way that we can look at isolated concerns as far as damage to the uh, culverts, uh, ditches, things like that, that may not be a part of the overall resurfacing program? Certainly. And then Councillor Butler also wanted to know, are there any proposed works that would be done if this development were to proceed? Or anything that we would require the, I'll defer the to, developer uh, to do? I'll defer to Kira on this for site specific. Ms. Dolch? Thank you. Um, when we look at the site plan, pro when the site plan submitted for this application, we look to see if there's any um, need for improvement, especially in terms of drainage, things like that we'll be looking at. Um, we're not there yet. We're still at the zoning stage. But those are things that we looked at, look at and factor in, uh, depending on how much grass area is leaving the site, how much water we have to pick up on site or in other storage areas uh, in internal pipes, things like that. Um, we will look at. Um, any uh, improvements, uh, especially on the south side of the road, especially with regard to truck turning movements, if that's if that's needed at that time. Ms. Stolch, were there any comments that you heard from adjacent residents regarding infrastructure items that you don't think could be addressed through site plan? There's none that I, I've I ha I've uh, that I heard that haven't been considered. Uh, we're still looking at some. Uh, there was a truck turning template that we asked to put on. Um, and as you can see from the site plan they submitted uh, with the application, there was a truck movement template. Uh, we will look at that a little closer now that we've heard some comments about the ditch system um, and some impacts there. Um, I'm trying to think what other concerns we heard. Um, in terms of, I, I know there was concerns in traffic. We have considered that. Um, there is a, a stop controlled intersection at Disher Street. Um, when we looked at it originally, we didn't have concerns uh, with the traffic in this location, given that there's two access points right now with um, uh, the gas bar car wash uh, situation. Um, so we didn't feel traffic was warranted. Uh, obviously, council can ask for that. Um, you know, if they feel that's a major concern. Um, oh, in terms of lighting, that was another one. In terms of lighting, we will look at that. Uh, we always ensure, we ask for a photometrics plan, so any lighting proposed uh, as part of the site plan submission, we'll look at that to make sure there's no spillage over the property lines. Um, so light has to be directed towards their site, not towards adjacent residential properties. Um, in terms of market, I know there were some concerns in terms of market. Um, again, we can only uh, 
guess in terms of market as planners, there seems to be a need based on the fact that people are coming in, in with applications. Um, a lot of times they know their market in advance, uh, similar to the LCBO trailer. They wanted to, con they tested their market. They wanted to test it for second season. Uh, they felt pretty confident that eventually they will put a full facility in uh, based on the success they've had. But again, I, I can't, we can't really speak to market. It's, um, it's the restaurants usually do their do own due diligence with regard to that. Thank you, Ms. Dolch. Councillor Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you for understanding my original question and deciphering it further with, with the directors. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that there's going to be a photometric plan, but I do believe that a traffic study should be um, contemplated. And I, I don't think that the traffic study should be limited to Gorham. It should also include Disher um, because I if they proceed, and I, I get that this is just an information um, piece here, um, I personally don't want to see a zoning change for that residential portion of it. Uh, I'm totally against that. Um, but that will come up later on. Um, I would like to see um, that traffic study and a, a further, um, further that noise study um, as well, just to the back end portion that would be effective affecting the residents that would be on that side. So maybe you could speak to that. Yep, so uh, Councillor Butler, you're welcome to put forward an amendment if you'd like to request Council's approval to go forward with, let's, we can start with the traffic study and uh, maybe ask Ms. Dolch, um, were those parameters specific enough, Ms. Dolch? Councillor Butler's looking not just uh, turning on to Gorham egress ingress but also to disher yes it was that was clear okay so councillor butler would you like to put that forward i, I would mr chair thank you okay. so that uh, amendment is now on the floor that we request the applicant perform a traffic study comments or questions just to the amendments yeah yeah i um one thing that i just i i wanted to stress is that um the fact that currently we have a situation with Value Mart and the turning left and the turning right, it makes it difficult having two gas stations again right um, across the street from each other. And um, Mr. Minor or Mr. Shaw, I think, made the point about the Friendship Trail as well. Um, how is that going to be impacted with all of the traffic? I think those are very important points to uncover. Ms. Stolch, while this amendment is on the, on the floor, would the traffic study that we are requesting or the council, if approves this, would be requesting, is that specific to traffic that would be created because of this project or would it also look to what would be happening across the street? And then secondly, is there an opportunity for these two individuals to get together and cost share for one traffic study because it is kind of funneling onto the same arterial road? Uh, thank you. The um the traffic study will include um, future developments, things like that. They do look at a five-year forecast, so any traffic generated in, in a five-year period would be analyzed. That would include any de redevelopment of sites, obviously adjacent, they would have to consider, uh, and in the vicinity. Um, in terms of cost sharing between the two applicants, um, we can ask that question um, to see if they'd like to cost share to get together and do uh, one joint traffic study to look at the entire area in terms of Gorham, Disher, and uh, the Friendship Trail. Um, but I can't force them into yeah. that, but I can sure ask. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Dolch. Councillor Lubers, did you have your hand up to speak to the amendment? Oh. Yes, uh, Councillor Lubers. All right, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, I understand. Uh, doing the uh, traffic study for, you know, District Street and Gorham Road. But my problem when I'm looking at this whole thing is the traffic flow on the property. I, I see a, a real problem here, and I'm just wondering if, if that needs, needs to be addressed as well or if, or if it can be addressed. Ms. Dolch, does that form a part of this particular traffic study, or is that something that would be looked at further prior to the recommendation report coming back? internally 
Thank you. That's something that we would look at uh, internally. It's not necessarily part of the traffic study. Uh, the traffic study may look at things, um, if there's any possibility of queuing from the on-site traffic uh, onto the, the roadways, but not um, queuing on-site or, or traffic flow on the site. Okay. That's but Councillor Lubert's concerns will yeah. be looked at prior to the recommendation report. That's correct. We'll look okay. at them um, uh, prior to the report coming back, uh, as well as it's something we also consider as part of the site plan, but we'll do it in advance. Okay. Councillor Lubert's, is that satisfactory? Thank you. Mayor Redekamp. Thank you very much. Um, with respect to the traffic study, um, you know, this time of year it's very difficult. I'm told by the residents that it's very difficult, even though there's a stop sign at Disher and Gorham, it's difficult for them to make a left-hand turn a lot of times because of the flow of traffic, um, because this is the main route to Crystal Beach. Um, we're talking about the potential for another development where the, um, uh, where Mr. Compson has property and you know if the LCBO puts in a building that's 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 more we're promoting Bay Beach we're putting in a two and a half well we're putting in a three million dollar park and with the view to attracting more people all of whom will be using Gorham Road I I think that a traffic study is more than important here I don't know how um, we're going to avoid the necessity of widening Gorham Road um, it's unless we come up with another road someplace else, and I don't think that's likely. Uh, this traffic study is very important. It has to have a broad scope. So Ms. Dolch, um, when, we're, when we're commissioning that traffic study, I think we need to take this all into account because right now um, it's difficult when there are no restaurants. We're talking about two restaurants. We're talking about an unimaginable flow of traffic. I don't know where it would, I think Mr. Miner's correct. I don't know where it's all gonna come from immediately, but we need to keep our eye on, on the ball here. This is a primarily residential section that happens to have commercial property along a, a corridor, and it is a busy corridor. Thank you, Mayor DeCamp. Ms. Dolch, did you want to respond to? Oh, I, no, you don't have to. I just I thought I saw a hand go up. Okay, uh, Councillor Zanko to the amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I, I do have a question with regard to the traffic impact study. I do also support this. I think it's very, very important. Um, looking at the plan, there's a lot going on in that piece of property. And uh, I drove out there yesterday. I have no idea how that's going to all happen on that property. Um, so I, I do share Councillor Lubert's concerns as well. Um, but with regard to the traffic impact study, uh, through you to Ms. Dolch, is it possible or should we specify the time frame that we would like to see that study um, taking place simply because I would hate for that study to take place in November or December? Ms. Dolch? Thank you. Yes, uh, if you do have a specific time you want looked at uh, in particular, I would stress that in the, in the uh, amendment. Councillor Zanka, do something you'd like to well, I, I didn't know whether a friendly, could that be through a friendly amendment? Yeah, absolutely. You're looking for something closer to summer peak? Peak season. Okay. During the summer months. Uh, and just one more uh, comment. And, and also, um, I, I know that the traffic impact study will cover a, a wide area. Um, but I do have concern where the Friendship, Fest, or Friendship Festival, where the Friendship Trail is uh, as well. I, as far as pedestrian traffic, that, that's a great concern. Ms. Dolch, uh, now that the amendment speaks to timelines for the traffic study, how does that equate to timelines for recommendation report coming back and furthering the process of this application? Uh, in terms of the timelines, it'll be depending on, on the uh, traffic consultant when they can get started, how how much work they have to do with counts in advance. Um, hopefully, they can uh, move forward quickly and pick up this summer's uh, numbers, and then we should be back uh, with a recommendation report once all that work's done. Uh, we look at the recommendations uh, and see how to move forward from there. Okay, thank you, Ms. Dolch. So seeing nothing further on the amendments, so the amendment then is a traffic study uh, that would look at peak periods. All those in favor? So that is carried. Um, back to the original motion as amended. And I had Councillor Butler, the floor was still yours. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. If we could address the noise study at this point and um, try to figure out a solution to further that with the... So your aim is looking some type of noise study as it would be relatable to the neighboring properties? Yes, and, um, and how they can make changes to their plan to make it better. Okay. Ms. Ms. Dolch, what would be the way to approach that? First, if I could just get some clarification um, on that. In terms of the noise study, um, you're, you're meaning the residents on Disher Street? Because the other noise study dealt with the uh, residents to the east, not to the south. And you're Ms. clarifying it's to the south you're, you're wanting no, to? Ms. Dolch, in the report it spoke to the only decibel level that I, I saw um, was 93 decibels. And that was the figure that if it was... Um, with the doors closed during the running cycles, that it would be 93 decibels at the entrance. Do we have any information that speaks to what the decibel level would be for adjacent properties to the east from their property? Uh, no, there is no indication on what the decibel levels are on the, um, the properties. Um, so the three meter wall then going in, that would basically ensure that the 93 decibels is down to an MOE acceptable guideline once it gets to the property, they've looked at that? That's correct. So what they do, um, when they, they put it in a model uh, with the improvements, and from what I am seeing here, they have two different um, points, source points. So it's the two, the property at 3854 and 3848, or, 3848 Disher Street, um, and they determine the predicted daytime sound level of the outdoor areas for both sites, uh, which are coming in at uh, 63 decibel, uh, decibels um, at those locations. So, and they're going to uh, reduce them with the three meter noise barrier down to 50 um, at 3848 and uh, 47 at 3854. So we can provide further explanation in the report, a little more detailed analysis of the noise study. I, th I know I think it's that would be appreciated. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. We have all the details. Uh, we just give you a very uh, brief summary. So we can elaborate on that so uh, that it's clear. And further to that, Ms. Dolch, I noticed that we would look at regulating the operating hours. Who determines that uh, 8 p.m. is more sacred than 7 a.m.? It's again based on uh, more ministry guidelines in terms of noise levels, what's acceptable um, and what hours of operations are acceptable. Um, so those are based on those standards. Okay. Councillor Butler? Okay. Councillor Zanko. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Councillor Nutt. Thank you, Councillor Nutt. Councillor Luberts. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Jim, I'm just wondering if uh, Mr. Kernahan might be, able, might be able to answer this question, but again, I'm looking at the uh, site plan itself that came with the report, and uh, I'm just wondering if you can bring up the slide. Um, in that northeast corner, or southeast corner, rather, and yeah, northeast corner, excuse me, the uh, queuing of the cars to go into the car wash. When I'm looking at that, obviously you see two lanes of traffic. And, uh, but then when I look behind the uh, restaurant, there's a, it looks to me that this is a driving lane. And that driving lane is half if not less uh, the distance across than the uh, driving lane for the queuing. And I'm wondering if that's going to cause a problem. I think you see here the width of the driving lane is two cars. But over here, this is a driving lane between the parking spaces. This here looks like it's half of this. And if you get a car going in both directions, what's going to happen? 
Mr. Kernahan, is that to scale, or, is, or are we looking at the same thing? Uh, through Mr. Chair to Councillor Lubritz, um, it, the site plan we have on our files is to scale, and I can tell you that the driving lane um, in this area of the site meets the town standard for a two-way driving lane. Um, I'm not sure how how further to comment on that. It, yeah, I, it's, I'm looking at it more closely, Councillor Lubritz, and it looks like the, the path that's delineated by those solid lines, I don't necessarily know what that is supposed that to, line and that line. to do, but the distance between the parking spaces I, themselves looks to be wider than that. Yeah, just to clarify, that that's a truck turning movement, so that would be the, uh, the, the two solid lines. Uh -huh. That's depicting the movement of a truck. Okay. The actual access width is wider than that. It's between right, okay. the Thank ends you. of the parking spaces. Okay. Thank you for now, the clarification. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yep, absolutely. The uh, second thing is this here tank, I'm assuming this is an underground tank for the fuel double line tank. And uh, obviously that has to be filled. And I'm looking at how this is going to be accomplished. I would assume that the transport truck's gonna come in here with a tanker. He's gonna park here and he's gonna fill that tank. He's probably gonna do it in off hours or in the most, the, the slowest time of the day, either early in the morning or late at <clears> night. <throat> now, in my experience, I've seen tankers all different times of the day. And the problem that I have is if he's coming off Gorham Road and he's gonna park here, I know exactly how they do it. They leave their diesel running and they, and they empty their tank, and that diesel truck is, lights is gonna point right in his neighbor's uh, bay window. And I don't know what time of night it's going to be or what time of day it's going to be, but that's going to be a problem for the neighbor. Mr. Kernahan, is that something that will be addressed when we get the recommendation report? Uh, certainly we can, we can take a look at that issue. Uh, there is the possibility to enter off Disher Street as well and therefore have the truck parked uh, facing north. Okay. Councillor Luberts, you still have the floor. Okay. Now will that be uh, stipulated in the, uh, in the uh, site plan, the, uh, the final site plan? Or? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Councillor Luberts, I'm not sure that's something we can regulate through site plan control, but uh, I'll certainly address that in the re recommendation report. Um, yeah, so in the there's, no, there's no way for us to um, enforce it or regulate it. We don't have any mechanism to do that, do we? Through Mr. Chair, uh, not that I'm aware of at this time, but it's certainly something we'll look at and report back on. So all we can do is request it from the owner, and if they comply, they comply. If they don't, then the guy across the street just has to live with it. That's, you, that's something we'll, that's, yeah, we'll report back on. We'll look into that first. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, um, that's staff's current stance, but they're going to do some more research for us. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Luberts. Councillor Zanko. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. My first question is with regard to, um, in the report, it's noting a noise feasibility assessment, but I've also heard it referred to as a noise impact study. So I just wanted to get some clarification from Ms. Dolch that that is actually the same and the assessment isn't a less thorough uh, study. Ms. Dolch? That is correct. It, they are both the same. Uh, they call them a noise feasibility study. We just call them, we'll call them noise impact studies, just different names for the same thing. Okay, perfect. Um, and through you, my second question um, is to Ms. Dolch as well. Do we typically allow a three meter high fencing in the town or is that something that will require some policy amending as well? Ms. Dolch, what is our maximum? I know sometimes it's different between commercial and residential, but this is currently residential. Uh, yeah, through to Councillor Zanko, this uh, will require an uh, amendment or a variance to the fence regulation, which is a separate process from zoning. Okay. Um, and just a last comment, if I could, seeing that the property owner is here. Um, we did hear residents with concerns regarding the current property standard, 
um, and how it's been left for the past two years. And I, I just wondered if uh, hearing those comments, perhaps you would take those into consideration for the neighbors um, with, with concerns. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You could ask the, uh, the applicant to address. Yeah, it's been that. for 14 months and there were some amendments were going on. So we had to wait for the permits and all that. Though that's why it take, took so long time. So now it's up, just about to complete this project is, now we're gonna start the second phase, that's a petroleum site. The pumps, the new pumps will be there, canopy will be there. And now we have to wait for the car wash and the uh, restaurant, that's a different thing. But as far as the sea store and the pumps, new pumps will be moving on end of this month, pumps will start. We cannot do it because of the safety. We have to move into the sea store first, so we get rid of the uh, chaos. So that's where we build our uh, new pumps first, a new canopy, so the business does not shut off. And we run from the old one where we have. Now we're gonna pump, build a new one first, and that, then we're gonna close the old one, okay. and then keep switching it that way so we don't shut off the business. Sir, there was reference to a couple of debris piles that were causing the trucks to have to come in a certain way. And okay, that's as far three, as far three, as six the- six or 20 point turn. Is that going to be looked at and addressed in okay, the near future? Okay, okay, I'll address that, it's a good thing. Uh, right now, when I took over three years ago, there's a, in between, that where the truck comes in there, there's a safety that it has to be unloaded from the right-hand side, okay? We have a diesel pumps there as well, and a diesel tank. When I took over, the diesel pump was on the left-hand side. When the truck gets into that premises, the diesel truck is on the left-hand side, and the tank is also on the left-hand side. As far as the gas is concerned, it's on the right-hand side. So the truck comes in there, he has to unload either one. When I order it, uh, diesel, before it was ordering it every, we order it every week, okay? So they used to order it, all three product, same time, every week. When I took over, the way I did it, just to, not to, just to support my truck drivers and these neighbors as well, I used to, I have a 15,000 capacity of diesel. Okay, I ordered it one time. Whatever the maximum I can order, whatever can be unloaded from there, I do not order 5,000, I order up to 14,000. So I go up to level very, very low, wait for that, and then order it more, so I just get it once in a month to let them turn around, because they have to turn around, that's a safety. I can't do anything. They cannot do it from one standing, do it, unload the diesel, and the same time, the gas as well. Okay. Thank you for your okay. comments. Okay. One last uh, sure. uh, thing. The, the current property that's a residence, yeah. there were some cons concerns about the grass cutting and the upkeep of that property. Is that something you might be able to take a look at as well? Yeah, that's because I'm not sure that I will be moving in there because once I demolished this house where I'm living right now, so it was rented before and she was taking care of that property. Okay. Till last August, we she moved out from there, so it was a snow season. Interesting, there was no grass problem there. So my old, uh, that grass cutting peep guy who was doing it. I don't know what they told you. It is Fort Erie, but it doesn't snow all 12 months of the year. That was, that was bad information. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's why just uh, we had to wait for that guy to come in. He was on leave. So I just arranged a different guy. Now he's gonna be there uh, twice a month to take care of that thing, okay? okay? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Councillor Zanko. Nothing further, thank you. Seeing nothing further, oh, Mayor Redekop. I said a few questions and I, I wanted to, um, maybe Mr. Kernay can, can help me. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to go back to a policy 3.D.9 of the uh, regional policy plan, which is referred to in the report. Just wondering how- what, Mayor, what page number are you? That would be at? page uh, page four of the report Thank you. under regional policy plan. Just wondering how, how Mr. Kernahan's gonna go about reconciling this particular application and the busy nature of the proposal with the existing neighborhood and the fabric of the neighborhood. Mr. Kernahan, have you ever delivered a recommendation report before you've written the recommendation report? <laughs> Uh, through Mr. Chair t to the Mayor, um, 
I wrote down a lot of notes tonight. Um, certainly, I heard a lot of concern at the neighborhood information meeting as well. So we will take a hard look at uh, the number and configuration of uses on this site and uh, analyze what we think the impacts might be on the uh, surrounding neighborhood and, and make the best recommendation we can as far as integrating it into the neighborhood. Well, and, and I, you know, you, our, our planning staff, just so that we're all clear here, I happen to think that the planning staff, including you, Mr. Kernahan, have given us very good advice over the course of the year. There's been the odd occasion where I think we maybe um, had some anxiety about some of the recommendations. I just, I'm hoping that I'm not going to be anxious about your recommendations coming from this uh, matter. Uh, that's why I'm, I'm dwelling on these little points that give me some comfort in knowing that when the recommendations are made, the existing neighborhood and the fabric of the neighborhood and the, the, the need for some orderly um, development won't be lost in the, in the um, process. Um, so thank you very much for your, your comments. I did have a, another question, Mr. Chair, if I might, since Absolutely. Mr. Kernahan is here, about this three meter high fence. And I mean, I understand it's a different process, but really, if we're going to be going through the the, the zoning, it would seem um, it would seem rather burdensome for the property owner to get a rezoning and then be faced with having to now get this uh, leniency on a essentially ten foot high fence, which we don't really permit, um, which is rather curious. So how would how would we facilitate? that yeah, I was going to circle back to that as well yeah. because that that goes through the committee of adjustment now uh, and no don't through it goes sure through it, it's uh, through the chief building official a number of years ago um, the issue of fences were intentionally taken out of the zoning bylaw and given their own bylaw it gave the bylaw enforcement folks greater degree of power to to do things um, and at that same time the uh, the uh, power to grant variances was uh, was delegated to the chief building official. Um, so, so would the recommendation report then include comments from the CBO that says, I hereby authorize or uh, give permission to? I, I'm, I'm going to defer to Ms. Dolch on this. I, one process I, 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 one has I, to begin. And if, if we don't get to the three meter fence, yes. none of this is worthwhile. I, I appreciate that. I'm just not sure how uh, procedurally we integrate these two things. So I'm going to defer to Ms. Dolch on that. Sure, Ms. Dolch. Um, what we'll do is, is we'll, we will have comments from uh, the director and chief building official because it's kind of a combined job between the two of them um, prior to coming back with recommendation only because obviously um, as we move forward if uh, fence variances cannot be granted uh, then we will have concerns uh, with noise levels. So we'll have to uh, get that assurances before we move forward with the recommendation to make sure that that, that fence can be constructed uh, to um, secure uh, appropriate noise levels and miss Dolch in that process is there an opportunity for the neighbors to comment directly to the CBO as far as the heights the materials those types of things uh, no not through the current process uh, that's something again they're, they're always welcome to write in about their concerns on the height um, now that they've heard the height is three meters they're welcome to write in but there's no formal process no. okay Mayor Redicom? Right, so <clears throat> the mere fact that we would be contemplating a three meter fence suggests to me that there are some serious issues relative to this particular proposal. I may be wrong, but it's, it's not typical. So I take, I, I, I'm somewhat concerned about that. Um, I'm like Councillor Butler. I'm skeptical about the, um, about the rezoning of this residential parcel to commercial to fit more of this stuff in, I'm, uh, I'm going to be a difficult sell on that, that one, um, not to telegraph what I'm thinking. Um, then the other question I had was, we're dealing with um, right now in, in uh, the gateway part of the town, um, a um, secondary plan that tries to put buildings closer to the road and not have traffic in front of the building, which this is, this, uh, this particular uh, drive-through is going to have a buffered landscape and then it's going to have cars circling in front of the restaurant, which seems curious. 
is that um, something that we would typically um, encourage? I appreciate that. And um, Ms. Dolch has been more directly involved in uh, commenting on the uh, a particular proposal in the gateway. So I'll defer to her on this one as well. Thank you. Um, yes, that is normally the situation where we'd prefer the building to go closer to the street and then have the drive through facilities uh, in the rear screen from the street, uh, especially uh, to get that um, that front facade that we're all looking for to slow down traffic, do, do those kind of things as part of urban design. Um, the issue we have in this case uh, is the fact that the residences are located um, just to the east. So to put that drive-through loop um, to the rear would put the drive-through closer to the residence. So in this case, we did um, require a lot of screening along the street in terms of landscaping uh, for that purpose. Right. <clears throat> so I suppose um, some of that really is a function of whether the residential property gets rezoned or not. If it's rezoned to commercial, then, then I can understand the argument. If it's not, it in itself could be a buffer. And I, and I take it that staff does have a copy of, the, um, of this revised plan that was presented by the residents? Uh, through you, Chair, that was the first I'd seen of it was this evening, but uh, okay. after you, this evening, I will. You now have the PowerPoint presentation that has that. Right. Okay. Mr. Uh, Kernahan, on that same point, are you in receipt of the letter that was handed out to Council just before the meeting tonight from Robert and Vicki Baker? No, I'm not. Okay, so we'll make sure you get a copy of it. You have it, Chair? Okay. May I write a copy? No, that's it. Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Kernahan, thank for you. your concise report. Your Worship. Uh, so seeing nothing further... So that is on the floor now as amended to include the traffic study. All in favor? That is carried. Takes us to PDS 36, 2018, request for extension conditions south of 359 Gorham Road, the recommendation reports. So moved. Moved by Mayor Redekop. So the recommendation is for a one-year extension to August 18th, 2019. Um, the applicant was requesting Two years, as noted in the alternative section, that would require a member of council to put that forward as a change. Councillor McDermott? That you'd like to do that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so that uh, amendment is on the floor to change that from a one-year extension to a two-year extension, so that would then be August 18th, 2020. Speakers to that. Mayor Redekamp. Uh, yeah, just for some context here, I don't know what's in the agreement with respect to the um, the uh, acquisition of the road allowance, but is there a dollar amount that uh, is attached to this? In other words, is it a purchase? Ms. Dolch? Uh, I don't have that dollar amount. That was done back in 2011 when he purchased it. Um, at that time, that was the value, but I could I could pull out that information and send it to you separately um, by email if, if that suffices. But he did purchase the property already. Um, it was just the agreement. I'm sorry, I lost. I got, there I lost was a the value. There was a value associated in that agreement at that time when it was created in 2011. I don't have that value in front of me, but I could send that to you by right. email. So the road allowance hasn't been purchased yet. That's what this is all about. That's correct. It's just yep. the the value was cre uh, was assessed back in 2011. So I don't have that in front of me in terms of the details of that agreement of purchase and sale. I'd have to get that through legal. So I could. Um, and accordingly, we wouldn't know what the property, what this road allowance is worth if it's changed in value at all. Um, that's seven years ago. Um, I haven't. I mean, I'd be surprised if it hasn't changed somewhat. And uh, although I, I'm quite um, supportive of this area being developed, I'm also supportive of making sure that we sell property for what it's worth. Um, so I don't think I'm prepared to vote on this until I, I know that information. Um, I can't move to defer this since I've already asked questions and, and spoken about it. But I, I think, to me, that's important. So the, the one year is already on the table, which wouldn't give us that Luxury, unless we did go the deferral option, but we're I, back to. Uh, I have the same problem either way. That's right. Yeah. So we're back to Council McDermott's uh, amendment for the two years. Further speakers to the amendments? Seeing none, all in. Councillor Luberts? 
Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, just listening to uh, the mayor's comments, um, I guess I would ask the mayor, would you like to defer this until we get that number? I think that would be appropriate because uh, I think we have an obligation to the public to make sure that we sell our properties for fair market value and we put a, a number on that and he had a certain period of time to purchase it or come back and ask for an extension. And like Mayor said, you know, it's been seven years now and I think that uh, we should uh, reevaluate the value of the property before we go forward. So I don't know, Mayor, if you would want to make the deferral or if you don't mind if I make the deferral. Mayor Riddikop cannot uh, because he spoke to it and you All right, kind well, of then did, I would ask I'll, that I'll we uh, postpone I'll, I'll this. I'll still allow it. But, you know, is I would ask that we postpone this until we uh, uh, receive uh, more information on the value of the property. Okay, and what would uh, would be looking at one month from now, Ms. Stoltz, our next Community and Development Services, Planning and Development Services meeting? Uh, yes, that's correct. It would be one month from now in July. Is uh, through, oh, I'm the chair. Uh, Madam Clerk. Is there any opportunity to bring this back sooner than that? So we're, we're only looking at a dollar figure, um, which may or may not change council's perception on how to move forward. I know that this developer has a lot of things in the works. A month may not seem like a long time to council, but it is a long time in the eyes of someone trying to work a development deal. Is there any opportunity to tack this on at some point uh, to a, a meeting a week from now, a regular council meeting, if we have the information? Yes, I believe that's possible. Okay. Would you be okay with that, Your Worship? Um, I don't see it. It's a big rush. I mean, I if we defer it for a month, this isn't going to be. Um, it's not going to prejudice the uh, the property owner, and it may provide us an opportunity to have some dialogue with the property owner in the event we find out that the property is worth more. I mean, we don't know what it's worth actually right now. We know what it was worth in 2011 because that's the basis for the contract. Um, I would think we would need more than a week to find out what it's worth and to have some discussion with the developer. Um, so you're looking not just for the information from Ms. Dolch then that you requested earlier, which was the appraisal value at the time it was purchased, but now you're adding that you'd like a current appraisal. I think we need to get some, if not an appraisal, we need to get some information as to whether that property has increased in value. I'd be shocked if it hadn't. I, I would be <laughs> shocked if it hadn't as well, and I think it's, as I said, I'm supportive of this development proceeding, but I think um, we need to make sure that if we're selling our land, we're selling it for what it's worth. Okay. So, uh, Councillor Luberts, then, your postponement is, uh, we're back to one month. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I, I don't think that a month is going to hurt the developer. I know a little bit about development, and he is nowhere near... Uh, anywhere where a month is going to hurt him at all. I know he has a lot of things in the works, but on this piece of property, yeah, I don't think he's anywhere near uh, uh, at the point where a month is going to hurt him at all. Okay. So I don't, I don't have a problem. This Real Electric has done work for him in the past, right? Well, they worked for him in the past. We haven't worked for Mr. Compson in probably five or six years. So I have no conflict of interest. No, that's, that's not what I'm you're going. asking about. No, I'm just, where I'm going is you have a lot of information that's hearsay. It's not really relevant to what we're discussing as far as where he may or may not be at is what I'm getting at. Yeah, well, I know a little bit about construction and if he was in a position where he, a month would hurt him, he would be much further along than he is now. I only raise that because we did receive a letter from the developer uh, which did stress uh, time is of the essence and did stress that he was looking for two years. But yes, I understand that, that uh, having Mr. Said Chair, that, Luberts, and I see those letters on a regular basis. Time is of the essence on every product project, but that doesn't mean that time is of the essence. Thank you, Councillor Luberts. So Councillor Luberts has a postponement motion on the floor for one month. All in favor? Opposed? No. Okay. Um, we're going to recycle. No, it's okay. You had my ear. Councillor Zanko has a question. Well, I, I think maybe my question's too late, but my question was if we were to obtain that information um, sooner than one month, if, if that could be 
uh, a friendly amendment to the timing amendment um, one month or if sooner should it become available? It's either one week or one month because we're on our summer okay. schedule. We need to know from staff if a week is enough time to get a new appraisal. No, no, the, <laughs> it's on the floor for one month. Uh, that's the postponement. You'd like it if we have the information? Okay. So, so Mayor Redekop has requested that we get the purchase price from 2011. Would also like to have dialogue with the property owner if it's determined by staff that the appraisal value has probably gone up from there. More than likely not a week to have all of those things happen. Um, so we're looking at probably one month is where we stand realistically. I, I don't see this happening within a week. If it could? then we will direct uh, Madam Clerk to have that before us within one week. Yeah. But we're really, we're really looking at uh, three or four days before the agenda is posted and notice goes out. So, but if it's possible, we'll make it happen. Yeah. The letter's dated April 17th. Mm -hmm. This is, what's this? June. Yeah. You weren't looking for a specific day, were you? Just, I can only give you the month. <laughs> So we have that postponement motion on the floor for one month. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. June the 11th. Just check my calendar. Today? <laughs> Takes us to the last report, PDS 39-2018. Town of Fort Erie Affordable Housing Committee, draft terms of reference. Mayor Redekamp, I, I figured you would. So that is on the floor, Mayor Redekamp. If I could just uh, speak to that as soon as I can find it. I thought there were a couple of things in the, um, in the uh, terms of reference that maybe should be looked at. The first is on page seven. They're both on page seven of the report and it's uh, per section 5.02, which speaks about uh, appointments um, if there's a vacancy. Um, any vacancy affecting the vice chair, chair, or secretary shall be filled from the remaining. Okay, so that's fine. You're not going to go through the whole thing and tell us which ones are fine, are you? No, 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 no. So, I've, so um, it was 6.02. Special meetings for extraordinary purposes may be called by the chair. Just wondering if there shouldn't be some latitude for a majority of members to call a special meeting as well. Um, so that's not just left to the chair and there's some mechanism in case something comes up, the chair might not be available. So I'm, I would move that we amend that to provide that it may be called by the chair or a majority of members of the committee. Ms. Richardson, any opposition to that? No? Sounds good. So that amendment is on the floor. No comments or questions, no hands going up, all in favor? Okay, back to the report as amended. Mayor Redekop. I'm good, I wanna thank uh, staff for putting this together. I think this is very helpful and uh, certainly something that there's been a lot of interest expressed on in our community and definitely uh, we know that there's, there's a need for affordable housing. So thank you to uh, staff, uh, Ms. Richardson in particular. Thank you, Mayor Redekop. Further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor of the report as amended. That's carried. New business or inquiry specific to planning and development services? Seeing none, comments or questions regarding the business status reports? Seeing none, I'll turn the chair back to his worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Pissarro, and that takes us to infrastructure services. Councillor Zanko. Uh, thank you. Infrastructure services is now in session. Uh, we have no presentations or delegations this evening, so that will bring us to report IS 23-2018 award of engineering, engineering services for BRIG 19 bridge and culvert repair and replacement contract number ISE 18P BRIG 19. Can I get a mover please? Councillor McDermott, that report is on the floor for any questions or comments. Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor? That carries.
That brings us to IS 24-2018, notifi notification of intent to award single source purchase. Can I get a mover? Um, Councillor Passero, are there any questions or comments? I will call the question. All those in favor? That report carries. Moving along to IS 26-2018, Bell Mobility Small Cell Technology Installation Agreement. Councillor Nutt, is there any comments or questions? I will call the question. All those in favor? That report carries. IS 27-2018, award of request for proposal for consulting services for asset management plan contract number ISE 18P AM PLAN. Can I get a mover? So moved. Mayor Redekop, are there any questions or comments? I will call the question. All those in favor? That carries. IS 28-2018, Federation of Canadian Municipalities Municipal Assess Asset Management Program Grant Agreement, Request for Capital Budget 2018 Amendment. Councillor McDermott, are there any questions or comments? I will call the question. All those in favor? That carries. Are there any items of new business or inquiries? Uh, Councillor Nutt and then Butler. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to Mr. Walsh. Uh, previously at the last Council and Committee meeting, I had uh, made an inquiry about the standing water on the east side in the ditch on Ott Road. I was just wondering what became of that. Uh, Mr. Walsh. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, or Madam Chair, uh, I don't have any information on me at this, I know uh, Mr. Campbell has looked at it. He has not got back to me. Thank you very much. Um, just if I may, sure. madam. On the west side, the ditch was, uh, the ditching and brushing occurred on the west side of Ott Road, and a resident contacted me asking me if uh, the town is responsible for cleaning out all the debris that the cyclone machine <laughs> left behind. His words. Yeah. Um, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, we expect that when we do the brushing, the debris is chopped up to a level that will allow it to degrade um, and decay rather readily. <laughs> um, so essentially what you see is what you get right now. If there's anything that's hindering drainage, uh, we can take a look at that, but uh, if it's in the ditch, we intend to leave it. So really, it's like a enviro-friendly mulch we've added to the ditch? That's correct, yes. Uh, my last question is, um, I had made inquiries in the past about uh, speed limit signs for the west side of Burger Road heading south from Netherby. There's no, no signage on that side, only signage heading northward, is it possible to get a speed limit sign up in that area? Um, so somewhere close to the first rail line? Yes, uh, speed limit signs, you've requested those before, they'll be up before June 21st. Thank you. And I do have um, some be feedback from Mr. Story, who wanted to compliment Dave Maiden on his thorough and very good explanation and all of his patience on explaining a drainage issue. And uh, he just wanted me to pass that along and said that he thought that uh, Mr. Maiden was an excellent, excellent employee of the town. For you, Madam Chair, thank you for, uh, to the councillor for that. I'll pass on your, your compliments. Uh, thank you, Councillor Butler. Thank you, and Madam Chair. chair. Um, Recently, over the last couple of weeks, um, we've been receiving emails, or Mayor and I and a few of the councillors have been receiving emails with respect to the new stop signs that have been placed on Ridge and Far, and um, and I know that there is um, an advance warning that there's a new uh, stop sign that. Uh, 
and uh, Mr. Mr. Walsh is uh, aware of because we've been communicating, um, are the concerns from the residents that um, since those stop signs haven't been there, people are not aware of even the new sign that has been posted 800 meters away or whatever it is. Um, and so the question is, why not have a flashing component to it so that they can be alerted? I'm just wondering, Madam Chair, if uh, the Director of Infrastructure Services can speak to that a bit. Mr. Walsh. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, a, uh, there is a flashing stop sign uh, on Far Road that was in place uh, for a number of years there. We did have uh, a number of uh, number of vehicles go through the stop sign um, and into the intersection. With the new signs, a, um, we typically uh, wait to see how the traffic plays out to see if um, more notification is required. Uh, as the stop sign is new, uh, compliance is uh, uh, somewhat wanting. You'll find that with any new stop sign um, placed, uh, the, the three-way stop on Thunder Bay at uh, uh, Bernard, or was it Burley? Either one, doesn't matter which, but uh, had the same issues. A new, uh, new three-way stop was installed in Niagara-on-the-Lake on, the Lake on uh, Creek Road at Concession 3, I believe it was. Uh, they're having the same issues there. So it's, it's a matter of uh, traffic getting used to the stop signs. And uh, once that happens, we'll take another look at it and uh, go from there. Uh, I would note to the committee that uh, the police ha have uh, or are undertaking enforcement in the area. We have a number of issues in that area, and they're well aware of the issues as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just as a follow-up to uh, Mr. W Welsh's um, discussion, I think the main concern is that um, of the proximity of John Brandt Public School, and their concern is the safety of the children that cross there, and also of the residents that um, that cross there for the market on Saturdays and and for shopping in the downtown core. So I, I'm just wondering if maybe we can step up uh, the observance. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, is the councillor referring to police stepping up or staff? I would say both. Noted. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor Butler? Is there any? Oh, Councillor Passero. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we'll keep that uh, train going. Uh, through you to Mr. Walsh, if I could, regarding Albany Street. I've had some residents express concern regarding uh, speeding or perceived speeding on Albany Street. Um, there's only one, there's stop signs at concession, there's one at Helena, it's a, a great distance in between. I know that we are generally not supportive of using stop signs to slow down speeders because people just speed up in between when they know there's another stop sign but I'm looking at the majority of people who are coming and traveling eastbound. If you come off of Helena, you're going eastbound along Albany. Uh, it's a very rural wooded area on both sides. Uh, people generally pick up speed and they maintain that speed once they hit Albert Street and everything beyond going east. So I'm wondering if we could take a look at where we have the speed signs placed and if there's any uh, opportunity to bring this before traffic coordinating committee to get it on the radar, no pun intended of Staff Sergeant for some enforcement. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I can bring that up to the Staff Sergeant uh, prior to our next TCC meeting. Thank you. And you could uh, take a look at the speed signs as well, through you, Madam Chair. I'm guessing that's noted as well. Thank you. Are there any other uh, items of new business, Councillor uh, Lubertz? Yes, uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, you'll have to excuse me if we're in the wrong committee, but I got some emails. People are concerned about the holiday weekends coming up down in Bay Beach, and they're wondering if uh, we can notify the Niagara Regional Police and ask for some uh, increased uh, presence 
for the July 1st and the July 4th weekend because uh, they've experienced some uh, problems in the past with uh, the kids drinking and uh, a lot of uh, vandalism and a lot of problems down there for the weekend. So if we could get, I was going to direct it to our, our CAO, but I guess maybe we'll have to direct it to our acting CAO or whoever that is or to the mayor. Um, Mr. Jansen, did you want to um, make note of that? And just further, our new bylaw enforcement officer, um, obviously they, they don't enforce the law, but um, is there any plans to have increased bylaw presence during that period as well? Um, to you as chair, uh, that is something I'd have to follow up with and get back to you unless uh, planning has any other comment on that. Ms. Dolch, did you want to comment on that? I apologize, <laughs> I missed the question. <laughs> um, so Councillor Butler was uh, asking regarding police presence, um, or sorry, Councillor Luberts, uh, regarding police presence for Bay Beach um, during the holiday months. Um, for, for the, for the two days, uh, and my question was, did we plan on having increased uh, bylaw officers as well? Madam Chair, if I may, uh, in my uh, in my communications with the police on the Albany issue, I'll bring up um, Councillor Lubert's uh, concerns um, with respect to bylaw enforcement. Uh, they typically work. Um, uh, on the weekends, and I think July 4th is a Wednesday this week, or are you concerned, is the councillor concerned about uh, the Canadian holidays? Um, but we can we can look into the hours that we're, they are working. Councillor Luberts, did you, were you hoping for both July 1st and the 4th? Well, yeah, I think that last year they had problems on both holidays. And it's not so much a bylaw, it's uh, the drinking and the... Uh, the problems with the uh, kids and the crowds, and I think it's more going to be a police a police presence. Um, I know that uh, there was some people talking that um, during uh, the uh, students have their skip day every year, and uh, the police had an, a, a little extra presence this year, and there was a lot less problems, and the residents were very happy with the fact that the police were there more, and the fact that we were checking for uh, alcohol when they were going on to the beach. So I think, you know, if we let everybody know we're gonna be checking the alcohol on the beach for our bylaw, for our beach security, but the uh, police presence I think is gonna to have to be Niagara Regional. Okay, Mr. Walsh, you're interested. Yeah, that goes to my uh, statement uh, previously. I'll, I'll bring that up to uh, Staff Sergeant McAllister. Excellent, thank you. Is there any other inquiries or new business. Uh, Councillor Nutt. Sorry, I did forget one thing, Madam Chair. Through you to Mr. Walsh, speaking about the Niagara Regional Police, I had brought up uh, a request at the last council meeting that Sergeant McAllister contact that resident, and I supplied the uh, resident's contact number and name to our regional councillor. Um, I received a call this morning and he has not been contacted yet, so I've emailed his contact information to you. Could you please see that they do contact him? Mr. Walsh? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, what's, what's that regarding? I'm it's regarding this fact that there was an officer sitting right out front of uh, the Memorial Hall and people were driving excessively fast with the kids walking to school in the morning. They were blowing through the, uh, the intersection there. I asked him if there were any blue cars. He said no, so I know it wasn't the mayor. <laughs> but uh, he said there was an officer there, but there was no enforcement being done, and he was wondering why. Um, Mr. Walsh, can I, you I, follow up on that, maybe? I can bring it up to the police. I'm not sure what they'll do. Thank you very much. Are there any other items of new business? Seeing none, that brings us to the business status report. Are there any comments or questions? Seeing none, I will hand the chair back to you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Zanko. That takes us to corporate and community services. Councillor Nutt. 
Thank you, Your Worship. Corporate and Community Services is now open. We do not have presentations or delegations tonight. We'll move right into reports. Can I get a mover for CS07-2018? Thank you very much, Your Worship. This is the Spring Capital Variance Report. That report is on the floor for discussion. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? That passes, none opposed. We'll move on to new business and inquiries for corporate services. Any new business or inquiries? Seeing none, we'll move on to the business status report. Comments or questions on the business status report? Seeing none, I'll close corporate and community services and pass the chair back to his worship. Thank you very much, Councillor Nutt, very efficient. Uh, scheduling of meetings, any meetings coming up that anyone wishes to announce? Councillor Butler. Thank you, Your Worship. Wednesday at 5.15 at uh, St. Luke's Church um, is the Ridgeway BIA meeting. I can't remember what street that's on. Beg your pardon? Which street? St. Luke's. That's on... Prospect, uh, right? On the corner of Prospect and Disher. Disher. There we go. Yes. Friday, uh, this Friday, the volunteer appreciation night at G-Fest starting at 5.30. Any other meetings? Councilor Passero? Yes, Your Worship. Tomorrow here at Town Hall, our Museum and Heritage Committee is meeting in committee room number one, 10 a.m. Any other meetings? If not, Councilor Nutt, would you do the honors? Thank you, Your Worship. The Council and Committee meeting for the Town of Fort Erie hereby adjourns at 9.05 p.m. All those in favor? None opposed, that is carried, thank you.